Stephen F. Austin's high octane offensive attack has made the trip up to Conway and the purple and gray stripes to take on a nationally ranked Central Arkansas squad, bruised and battered by injuries, but still finding ways to win. Both teams still have their dreams alive for a Southland Conference title, a must win for the Lumberjacks and the Bears. Coming up next. Celebrating the 50th anniversary of the Southland Conference, we welcome you to First Security Field at Estes Stadium in Conway, Arkansas, the campus of the University of Central Arkansas, as we get you set for the Bears and the Lumberjacks of Stephen F. Austin. Hello and good afternoon, everyone. Alongside Shea Walker, I'm David Salzman. So glad you're with us today. Shea, let's talk about SFA. A nice win last week. You saw them defeat Nichols down in Nacogdoches 55-41. But the Lumberjacks at 3-4, and four, still a team trying to find some consistency. Well, they certainly are, David. You think about the way that they opened the conference play with a loss at Southeastern and really did not do very, anything very well at all. But then they come back next the following week and they just absolutely have a great game against Nichols State. So Coach J.C. Harper is trying to figure out which Lumberjack offense is going to show up today. Well, he certainly doesn't have to figure out who his starting quarterback is. Brady Attaway leading an offensive attack, second in the nation in passing offense and total offense in the FCS. Well, you talk about putting up big numbers on offense, and this is a play fast and go fast offense, and they start throwing the ball as soon as they walk out of the locker room. They don't worry about timeouts. They don't worry about anything. This, they're gonna, the ball's going to be flying around for the Lumberjacks, and that's the way they like to play offense, and it's a very high, as you said, octane offense. Tons of playmakers around, all around Brady Attaway. Now, UCA, you know, every team suffers injuries, but close to unprecedented what the Bears have had to go through this season, losing their starting quarterback in Winrick Smothers, and last week their star tight end and Chase Dixon, yet somehow still able to find a way to win last week against Lamar. Well, Ryan Howard stepped up and had a great game for the Bears against the Cardinals down in Beaumont. They come out with a two-point win, and Coach Conn talked about how important that win was, almost a signature win in his mind as it relates to the Bears. But listen, both of these teams are one and one in conference play. They both have to win today if they want to stay in the chase. Let's go down to the purple and gray stripes and Aaron Cofield. Thanks, guys. It's a little windy, and there is a slight cloud cover out here, but that is nothing compared to the downpour we experienced just a few hours ago. In fact, UCA head coach Clint Conk told me it was giving him flashbacks of last year's game against the Lumberjacks, where they played in monsoon-like conditions. Someone that had a very big game in that matchup last season, SFA's Gus Johnson, he will not play here this afternoon. He is recovering from a high ankle sprain. Head coach J.C. Harper said he would be a game time decision, and they have decided to go with Josh West. J.C. Harper very high on Joshua West, his true freshman from Angleton, who, as Aaron just said, we will see this afternoon. As Shea mentioned, both teams 1-1 one one in Southland Conference play, so it's a must win to keep their title hopes alive. It's the Bears and Lumberjacks, and it's coming up next from Conway. The Game of the Week on the Southland Conference Television Network. Brought to you by Mid-South Bank, the official bank of the Southland Conference. It's time to love your bank. By State Farm. Visit texas.statefarm.com for your chance to win the ultimate VIP experience. And let State Farm help you get to a better state. And by Justin's, the official championship ring provider of the Southland Conference. Justin's, the ring of champions. The Lumberjack Experience at SFA. A quality education. Personalized. We work hard. And take it easy. Small classes. We know our professors. And they care. Beautiful campus. Not too big and not too small. Close to home, but not too close. Majors you want. Some only offered here. Winning sports. Oh, yeah. Discover the Lumberjack Experience. At the University of Central Arkansas, I've encountered world-changing academics and game-changing athletics, helping me become a regular on the Southland Conference Honor Roll. 
I was able to graduate early with a business degree, and now I'm seeking a second degree in physical education, all while playing Division I volleyball, softball, and soccer. UCA put me and my education front and center. Learn how at uca.edu. We'll see a lot of purple on the field here this afternoon, not just because of the purple and gray stripes, but purple the color for both these fine teams, Central Arkansas wearing their all purple and Stephen F. Austin wearing their road whites. Alongside Shea Walker, I'm David Salzman, and we're glad you're with us this afternoon. Central Arkansas won the toss, but has deferred the option to the second half, so they will kick it away. Two true freshmen deep back for the Lumberjacks. You just saw one of them in Eugene Wright, and the other, Joshua West, will get the start a tailback this afternoon for the Lumberjacks in place of the injured Gus Johnson. Eddie Kamara kicks it away into the end zone. We are underway following the touchback here in Conway. So right away for Stephen F. Austin, we will see Brady Attaway, the senior from White House, who would hold Southland Conference passing records, if not for his predecessor in Jeremy Moses. You see what he's done this season, 2,409 yards in 2013. But in his career, Shea, an amazing 9,248 passing yards. Well, just another standard day at the office for a lumberjack quarterback under the high-octane offense of J.C. Harper. He loves to spread the ball around. They average 90 plays a game, and they don't mind running the ball despite, despite that spread attack. And Joshua West, the true freshman, gains about four on the first carry of the afternoon. Our State Farm starting lineups. The offensive line, a good one. Ryan Chambers and right guard Andrew Ratliff, the two seniors. Early movement before the snap, and this will be a false start. On SFA, this has been a problem for them this season, averaging almost 78 penalty yards a game. And back to the lineups, the skill players, again, Joshua West at tailback and the four wideouts, Tyler Boyd, DJ Warboat Juniors, sophomore Aaron Thomas, and the lone senior, and Mike Brooks. This is Brooks on the catch, gaining about seven. It'll set up third down and four for the Lumberjacks in the game's first drive. And no surprise, they'll go no huddle and up-tempo on third down. Man in motion, Brooks. West gets the call, wrapped up in the backfield. T.J. Randall, the big defensive tackle, bringing him down. And the Bears a force fourth down. Defensive starters for Central Arkansas. There is T.J. Randall. The starting lineups brought to you by State Farm. Randall and Matt Hornbuckle, the junior from Colleyville in the interior of the line. Justin Hurd, a three-game suspension earlier this season, but still leads the team in tackles coming in at 31. And a strong secondary led by senior Marcus Peters. Nick Bruno, the sophomore, punts it away. Down by the Lumberjacks. A few yards shy of Central Arkansas' zone 35. That's a punt of 41 yards for the sophomore and Bruno. And we'll see Ryan Howard starting at quarterback for the second straight week for Central Arkansas. But Ryan Howard, David, has uh, really got a lot on his plate here. But the win last week at Lamar, we talked about that at the open, certainly seemed to have settled him down and give the team confidence that he can actually be the leader that they need to put them into another South and Conference Championship race. And a huge touchdown pass with under three minutes left to Courtney Whitehead to give the Bears the victory. The completion on first down, and this will move the chains. The nice strike by Howard to Desmond Smith, Richard Freshman. Here's our starting lineups presented by State Farm. Three Houston area products on that offensive line. Dominique Allen, Cole Carruthers, and C.J. Simon. Jordan Kirsch and Alec Willis wrap up that offensive line. And very good players at the skill positions. Damian Watts and Desmond Lewis with Willie Matthews starting a tailback. Well, how about this for a contrast? You see the Bears offense, David, coming out, and they're going quickly as well. This is Jatavius Wilson, freshman with the catch. A gain of about five. Andre Freeman on the tackle, and here's the State Farm starting lineups defensively for Stephen F. Austin. Malcolm Maddox, the senior from Newton, anchoring that defensive line. 
Big Shavian Hatton in the middle. Ortavius Hippolyte leads the team in tackles. The senior from Orange with 56 tackles on the season. Trey Valier and Caleb Nelson, excellent safeties defensively for J.C. Harper's squad. Kevon Madison and Demundre Freeman are at corner. Well, I really like the play call again. You think about what the Bears offense trying to do. Ryan Howard makes sure that he's comfortable, confident. He throws a nice pass on the very first play of the possession out to Desmond Smith. Gets good yardage on that. And then the next pass he gets out again to Jatavis Wilson. So seemingly finding a little bit of rhythm. The Bears offense now slowed down a little bit while the officiating crew gets mm -hmm. uh, gets everything under order. Coach Clint Kant down on the field on the field. Want to make sure that everything's going well. And Shea, we were told before the game we may see not one but two quarterbacks for Central Arkansas. There's Taylor Reed wearing number 15, the transfer from Memphis from El Dorado, Arkansas. He is a sophomore. Now he and Ryan Howard alternated possessions for the most part during the first half of their victory last week against Lamar. Ryan Howard really played the bulk of the second half in that come from behind win. And there are the stats for Reed, eight of 10 passing this season for those 114 yards. He did start nine games at Memphis in 2011. And again, another capable quarterback, but keep in mind, you're trying to fill the shoes of the player, offensive player of the year last year in Winrick Smothers in the mm -hmm. Southland Conference. So good that you have guys to step up and quite frankly, you would expect nothing less from a, a team coached by Coach Conk. I believe we have some trouble with the play clock facing Central Arkansas and so that's what the stoppage of play is about you reset the game clock and now we are ready for second and five with Taylor Reed at quarterback and the keeper by Reed wrapped up from behind by Patrick Martin freshman from spring a gain of a couple and that'll set up third down and three. And David, kind of what you're saying, you see that rotation. Ryan Howard back in the offense at the quarterback spot. Taylor Reed after that two-yard run. Comes off the officiating crew again mm -hmm. having problems. This is frustrating the Bears because, as you just said, Shay, that they want to maybe not go as hurry up as SFA, but they're looking to go up tempo. And obviously the problem with our clocks here in Conway slowing UCA down. Well, and the feeling too, David, is that you, you, you get this change of momentum with these quarterbacks and you want to try to capitalize on that and not able to do so. On third and three, catch made, but maybe shy of the first. Ball comes loose, but they will rule it a catch by Smith, but about a yard shy of the first down. Well, a nice open field tackle. Lumberjacks coming up big on that third down. They only needed about three and a half yards. They were only picked up three. And so both teams will exchange punts to begin this contest, as we'll see Jonathan Harrison, the junior punter out for the Bears. Mike Brooks is back for SFA. These are two prolific offenses. Bears averaging 30 points a game coming in. Stephen F. Austin almost 39. Fair catch called and bobbled, but I think Brooks is able to get it back. There is a flag down as Brooks did recover his own muff around the 12. Well, Mike Brooks generally a very sure handed receiver back there and, and really there was nothing overly difficult about that punt tried to field it cleanly around the 12 yard line but as you said David he did definitely bobble it he was blocked into the receiver First down. no flag for fair catch interference and so the lumberjacks will have it for the second time from their own 12 when we return to Conway. Maybe the light hurts his eyes. Maybe she's just not hungry. Ooh. Maybe it's her face. Avoiding eye contact is one early sign of autism. Learn the others today. When some people struggle with their mortgage payments, they become frozen. 
petrified. Not knowing what to do, they do nothing. But the people who do something, the people who take action, are far more likely to get the most positive outcome. Making home affordable is a free government program. Call now to talk one-on-one -on -one with a housing expert about the options that are right for you. Real help, real answers, right now. Maybe he's really focused. Maybe he likes spinning the wheels. Maybe he just loves trucks. Preoccupation with objects is one early sign of autism. Learn the others today. The umbrellas are coming out here in Conway, and Aaron Cofield even alluded to it during our open, how Clint Conk did not want to see anything resembling the monsoon that these two teams experienced in Nacogdoches when they played a year ago, about 14 inches of rain down in 12 hours, a game which would see the Lumberjacks upset the Bears. Tyler Boyd with the catch, a first down for SFA, and they'll go hurry up as usual. Second carry, Joshua West. A flag down as West gets to the edge. It's enough for the first, but perhaps coming back. Yeah, that is definitely going to come back. A holding call at the point of attack. But how about Joshua West? Only a freshman, David. And, and you see the poise and, and the moves that he has. He bounces it up, kind of runs it right in the middle, then gets some more yards as he bounces it outside. Great speed. Offense, number one. And yard penalty. We play first down. Boyd, with the catch on this drive, is called for the hold. And so it'll be first and long for SFA following up on Joshua West JC Harper calls him the most special player he has had since he's arrived at SFA this is his sixth season didn't take him long to have that opinion he's just a yeah. freshman and, and that's saying a whole lot when you have a guy like Brady Attaway that played for you and is on your coaching staff excuse me check that we'll be like that Jerry Moses <laughs> two great quarterbacks Brady Attaway chasing Moses in the record books on first and 18. Here's West. Good patience with a blocker in front of him in chambers and a good gain of about five. Nice job of Ryan Chambers getting downfield, throwing a little bit of a block, got up to the second level. So he goes from first and 15, as he said, to pick up five yards. Chambers, honorable mention, all conference last season. This is Brooks. Good block by one of his receivers in Ward, and he's out of bounds close to the first down marker, a gain of eight. You know, David, here's the thing that is so frustrating as a defensive player against this up-tempo offense is that play didn't look like it gained a whole lot of yards, but Brooks just kept navigating his way downfield layer by layer, picks up almost nine yards now, third and one. As mentioned, SFA averaging 90 plays a game. J.C. Harper wants that number to be in between 90 and 100. He says, when we're in rhythm, we are awfully tough to stop. Attaway doing a nice job handling the high snap, and West has enough to move the chains. Well, just to put some numbers behind what we're saying, this is an offense that averages 564 yards a game. That is second in the nation. Attaway. Finding war, but Ward unable to haul in the pass. J.C. Harper, there he is. An overall record of 37 and 40. But you see the bottom of that graphic. Now he has really resurged, if you will, this Lumberjack program. Two-time Southland Coach of the Year. Conference titles in 2009 and 2010. Former grad assistant under Mac Brown at the University of North Carolina. And a Clemson University graduate. Open is Boyd, a first down and more in the Lumberjacks for the first time in Bear Territory, the game to 25. Well, Bobby Watkins, the safety for University of Central Arkansas, David, he saves a touchdown as he's able to take Boyd's legs out from underneath, but not after a huge game. Attaway coming in, averaging 344 passing yards a game. That is fourth in the FCS. His average game on the stat sheet, 30 of 50. That's how many times they'll throw. And Attaway's going to throw once more. He's looking deep for Ward in double coverage and almost picked off. Marcus Peters almost had that ball in his hands. Well, it's having a lot of confidence in your wide receiver. Again, you're going to see bracket coverage. Now, Brady Attaway puts enough air underneath this ball so DJ Ward can get down there and get underneath it. But you see the two bare defenders there. Marcus Peters almost comes up with the pick, but 
Nice defensive play. Justin Love, the senior safety there as well. This is Boyd. A block by Aaron Thomas, but not much. Maybe a couple. Well, and this is what Coach Conk was telling us on the conference call was that just try to get Brady off of his spots and or try to just throw a little bit of a chink in the armor of this high paced offense. So you get an incomplete on first down by having great defense and then you force the play out. So now third and nine, not the easiest of downs. SFA converting 37 percent of their third downs coming in. Attaway with time and a man open. That's enough for the first down. Braxton Beer, the junior, with his first catch in a gain of 12. Well, a little bit of confusion in that Bears secondary. Dylan Winfrey, there's man-to-man -man coverage across the field, David. Now here's a flag down. Yep, flag is down on the far side of the field. We missed it, and it's a false start on SFA. Well, that's a big one. On third and nine, you pick up the first down. Bearden goes out and makes the grab, but... Third and nine now goes to third and 14. And those 78 penalty yards a game for the Lumberjacks. 109 out of 122 FCS teams. A troublesome spot for Brady Attaway's Lumberjacks this season. And now third and 14 for SFA. West in motion. This is Beard. A couple of blockers in front of him. And he may have enough for the first down. He needed 14. Uh, be close. He, he might have gotten about 14 and a half. And they will move the chains. Uh, they are going to move him. You're right. Boy, they're right on it. Just the nose of the ball is over where the line was. Great play by Beard. Keith Lawson is now in a tailback. Senior from San Antonio. That away fakes to him and finds Aaron Thomas. Good leap of a defender. And gaining close to nine yards. Zach Bush on the stop. Bush, junior from Denton. What the Geyer High School defending Class 4A Division I state champs in the state of Texas. John Walsh doing a great job there. He fakes it as out of way to Thomas and just can't find his man. I believe that was Beard on the far side. It was. Yeah, David, we talk about the weapons on this Lumberjack offense. Braxton Beard, and he's not a starter, not listed as a starter, but he is one of the many guys who can absolutely flat out play in skill position. We've seen Boyd make some big catches, Ward making catches, Beard, and I'm telling you, Mike Brooks, I mean, there's just so much talent. Here's West learning to, or looking to get to the corner and won't get there. Push back in the Lumberjacks. Force now to decide what to do on fourth down, and J.C. Harper will send out his field goal unit. And it's a loss of one. Good play defensively there by Derek Floyd. Coming up, making a big stop on Joshua West. Did not allow him to make the corner. Brought him down short of the first down. Jordan Wiggs will attempt a 39-yard field goal. His season long is 40. As you see, 9 of 12 this year. The punter, Bruno, is the holder. He gets it down. And the kick is good. And so SFA on the road and on the board first. Something tells me we'll see a lot more points with these two prolific offenses. But early on, it's the Lumberjacks with the 3-0 lead. At Mid-South Bank, we're dedicated to providing loans that allow our customers to achieve their business and personal dreams. That's one promise you can bank on. We're not just business associates, we're neighbors. We're committed to our customers and the strength of our local economy. Here at Mid-South Bank, responsibility matters. With over 61 locations and still growing in Louisiana and Texas, discover how our customers are finding strength in numbers at Mid-South Bank. In the NCAA Division I Football Championship Subdivision, the game is played with perseverance, integrity, passion, character, and sportsmanship. 
as he works to honor the game and respect his teammates, opponents, officials, and fans. Every FCS player grows in his responsibilities as a student athlete and as a member of his campus and community. The NCAA Division I Football Championship Subdivision. Every down, every day. 3-0 Stephen F. Austin over the University of Central Arkansas. Just under halfway through this first quarter. 14 play drive took up 66 yards in just over four minutes. And Jordan Wiggs, the 39 yard field goal to get the scoring started here this afternoon in Conway. Mason Jewell will do the honors and kick things off in the 35. Jewell, sophomore from Highland Park High School in Dallas. Dylan Winfrey had a hole for a moment in the middle of the field and as he took it out to the edge, a nice special teams play by the Lumberjacks and Eugene Wright. Discussion with our officiating crew as there is a flag down on the far side. Talk about this SFA offense. I was surprised when I saw 14 plays, but when you have such a quick offense, you can rack up the plays in a hurry. Well, it's kind of what you were alluding to earlier in the conversation that we had with Coach Harper. And he said last week in the game against Nichols, he wasn't really sure how many plays that they had run, but he knew it was a lot. But he, he just knew that the offense was in rhythm and, and kind of it, when it got good to him, it got good to him. And he just kind of kept the flow going. We get another big there day. There are fouls by both teams. Offside, kicking team is a five-yard penalty. After the play, personal foul, receiving team, be a 15-yard penalty. Both penalties will be enforced. It'll be first and 10, UCA. But, and just to go back to that game last week mm -hmm. against Nichols, I mean, the, this Lumberjack offense put up over 600 yards of total offense. It, it just, again, when it's in rhythm, it's a thing of beauty to see. Brady Annaway, six touchdown passes in that game. Glad you're with us today all across the Southland TV network, including on the Southland Conference mobile app. Scores, news, video, and more. And it's available for your iPhone, your iPad, and on Android. You can go to the App Store or visit southland.org slash mobile. My name is David Salzman. Happy to be in this seat, usually occupied by Randy McElvoy, and I'm told, Shay, that... We're getting reports. Rand, we, we're getting reports yeah. that uh, Randy's been talking about this mobile app for three years, but had to contact one of our assistant commissioners in the Southland Conference to ask about how he could watch the game. Well, hopefully he's watching on the mobile app wherever he is. There's J.C. Harper. Well, and... and David, really, there is still some some confusion going on. We've seen Clint Cock on the field as much as we've seen him pacing the sideline, <laughs> and he is in the ear of the officiating crew. Now you see J.C. Harper having his extracting his pound of flesh. So a lot of things getting undone. It looks like they're going to go back and re-kick right. where they said they weren't going to, but now they are. Right. Remember, Eddie Shelton had mentioned both penalties would be enforced, and I believe there was confusion as to whether the penalties are enforced from the spot of the tackle on the return or on the kickoff. And as you said, Shay, and as you see, now the Lumberjacks will kick off from their own 45 instead of the 35. Well, and I think the call is, is that the offsides penalty supersedes the dead ball penalty that happened after the play. Right. If both penalties were after the play, we would not be seeing this kickoff again. And Joel to Winfrey, eight yards deep takes me and the Bears will take over from their own 25. Just saw J.C. Uh, Harper a moment ago. Really enjoyed talking to both head coaches before this game who are very, very good friends. J.C. Harper even says that he feels Clint Cock may be the best coach in the Southland Conference and is always looking to him for advice. I think vice versa as well. An amazing job they've both done with their respective programs. Absolutely. And think about this. Both of these guys were defensive stars at their college. <laughs> J.C. Harper at Clemson and, of course, Clint Cock at Nickel State is, you know, All-America in the Hall of Fame down there in Thibodeau, but two defensive-minded guys, and so you got to figure they're going to get along. Taylor Reed at quarterback. Kelton Warren, his first carry. 
And it's enough for the first down. He's an interesting story. He had his red shirt taken off in the middle of the Lamar game last week. Had 14 yards all of last week. Gets 15 on this carry. Well, an impressive run. And what Coach Conk was telling us was that they literally took that red shirt off between downs, trying to make the point that this is just a young man, and but they need him to step up and play with the injuries that they've had. Jatavius Wilson on the grab. A short gain on first down. Ortavius Hippolyte, one of the Lumberjacks there. And there's Clint Conk. The 102 wins, the most in Central Arkansas history. And this is a program that dates back to 1908. Just mentioned that his alma mater at Nichols, an All-American there at linebacker. Ryan Howard in, and he short arms the throw to Desmond Lewis, setting up third down and seven. Well, that's a really long throw to make. Again, he's on the right side of the, on the right hash mark, and he's throwing the ball all the way to the left side of the field, David, below the numbers, and just did not have enough juice on it to get it out to his wide receiver. You see his numbers coming in, completing 63% of his passes. At Lamar last week, 26 of 40 for 281, three touchdowns and an interception. He'll throw on third and seven. Going deep, and unable to make the grab. Desmond Lewis, good coverage all the way downfield by Martin, but there is a flag down. You see Patrick Martin not looking too happy here. He was step for step with Lewis. Was the freshman Patrick Martin. Perhaps some tugging on the way. George trying to retrieve that pass from Howard. Let's see it again. Well, hard to see if there was any on that particular shot, but obviously the interference happened prior to that. And so a fresh set of downs for the Bears from the SFA 42. Willie Matthews, nothing doing. In fact, a loss on first down. There is. Big number 90, Shavian Hatton, a junior from Dangerfield, one of the Lumberjacks there. And a starter in all seven games so far for this Lumberjacks defense. And you can just see how he swallows up the running back, gets a little bit of help there. From his linebacker, or his, his battery mate there, Lance Schuyler, but two big, impressive defensive tackles for the Lumberjacks. Stepping up in the pocket, Howard going deep, and Lewis there to make the grab in the red zone. A gain of 34 as he beats Trey Valier on coverage. I don't think that Trey Valier had a good line of sight out of his safety position to where the ball was going. Desmond Lewis did a great job of running down, and really, Howard, all he did, David, on that ball, he just put a little bit of air under it, threw it out there where it could be run under, if you will, and, and it looked like Valier just did not have, was not able to locate the ball. 11th man for Central Arkansas, Jose Moore comes on late. Instead, the pass goes to Lewis on the bubble screen, and oh, it gains yes. eight close to nine. Now, how about the poise right there by Ryan Howard? It, for all the world, it looks like they're going to try to run a screen play to the right, and as soon as he gets the pressure, and at the, just the last nanosecond that he has to spin around, he wheels around, hits Desmond Lewis in stride. Lewis takes a big shot as he was trying to get that ball into the end zone, but it's now second and goal from the two and a half yard line. Now Taylor Reed in at quarterback. Blake Veasley is the man at tailback. It's Reed on the keeper, and he can't get to the goal line. Well, he picked up some yards. Dan Robinson hit him in the backfield, but Taylor Reed was able to move the ball a little bit closer to the goal line, and it, and it seems like, just obviously from what we see, this rotation of quarterbacks between Ryan Howard, Taylor Reed, and how they fit and mesh in the offense, and it looks like Reed is more of the running mm -hmm. quarterback, and that Ryan Howard is more of the throwing quarterback, who he is now back in the game. Yeah, Reed has 20 pounds on Howard. Will fade a pass to the end zone on third down for it's Whitehead. Caught. It's caught for the touchdown, but pending the penalty, it could be Whitehead's second touchdown in the last two weeks. Well, it will be. It was clearly, clearly pass interference by the Lumberjack defense. That is the call, and it's a touchdown for the Bears to give them the lead. His first touchdown was the game winner against Lamar last week. His second touchdown with 4.56 remaining in the first quarter.
Camara on to attempt the extra point. And Central Arkansas takes a 7-3 lead. The great catch by Whitehead on the fade from Ryan Howard. And the Bears go out on top. Are you sure we should take this billboard down? People find out State Farm does car loans as well as they do insurance. Our bank is through. Good point. Grab an edge. Look, there's two guys on the State Farm Borrow Better banking side. No, for real, there's two dudes on the State Farm Borrow Better banking side. Gentlemen, please get down from the State Farm Borrow Better banking side. Bill, get the hose. Okay, he's getting the hose. Okay, let's go. Want to borrow better? Contact your local State Farm agent about a car loan that can save you hundreds. yards on the drive and that young man and Ryan Howard his fourth touchdown pass and his last two starts finding Courtney Whitehead to put UCA on top by a score of seven to three there's Eugene Wright he and Joshua West back to receive the kick from Camara and Wright thought about it for a moment West tells him to take a knee and the Lumberjacks will have it from their own 25 You know, if there's one thing that won't phase SFA, it's when opponents score because the Lumberjacks know they can come right back and put points on the board. 39 points a game coming into this one this afternoon. Well, and, and during the uh, the break after the touchdown and extra point, you can see Brady Attaway walking down the sideline very calmly, talking to his wide receivers, talking to his offensive line. Hey, this is no big deal. <laughs> we, can, we can score with anybody in the country. That's the attitude that they have. West is at tailback. Attaway fakes the hitch and will dump it off to West and a good tackle made right away. Blake Childress, the junior from Mesquite, forcing the first down gain to be short about four yards. Attaway, now the handoff to West. Nothing doing. But credit the Central Arkansas front four that is making it incredibly difficult. Markeith Gaines blew the play up on that particular play and again they're down at third and six they even lost the yard on that after picking up four or so on the first down their defense just giving up 24 points a game catch made will it be enough for the first dj ward hauled it in forward progress may just be enough well, great job by dj ward to understand what defensive scheme was being run he saw the zone coverage he sat down in front of it and had a way hit him with the pass there's no easy game anymore in the southland conference you see both these teams one and one coming in mike brooks cutting it inside and getting past the 40 on first down a gain of close to seven well and you look at those conference standings again david and you think about the race mcneese and southeastern obviously both undefeated and man what a dog fight it's going to be every week in lamar keep in mind lamar pushed sam houston state and they were a very close game wasn't decided until late in the fourth quarter. Flag is down a hole more than likely as Mike Brooks gets first down yardage, but probably will be nullified. Well, here's the thing that we see this Bears defense trying to do is just keep keep the plays in front of you. Don't give up the big home run and make that slumberjack offense earn every yard that they get. And you see good sure tackling. We, we've seen Blake Childress make a good tackle. We've seen a couple of these guys come up and make 
good open field tackles for the Bears defense in mm -hmm. trying to make and force this Lumberjacks offense to run a mm -hmm. bunch of plays. And here at the conference, Tyler Boyd thought he'd be called for the hold. And that will be the call. Rain beginning to fall in Conway and SFA. Another penalty. That is, I believe, their fifth in the early going this afternoon. You played receiver, of course, in college, and I'm sure you weren't asked near as much as these SFA wideouts to block so often. Yeah. Easier said than done to do. Absolutely, and, and really, anymore, if you want to play in these types of offenses, you have to be able to block. Justin Hurd coming up with a huge play from that linebacker spot. But, yeah, you're right, David. I mean, it's now with the advent of the spread offense, the bubble screen, and all those types of plays that happen more on a horizontal versus vertical passing game everybody's got to be able to block downfield you mentioned this justin hurt preseason first team all conference the bears are happy to have him back three game suspension for a minor ncaa rules violation 220 tackles in his career coming in just got another one and call it a steady rain as sfa faces third and 19 and that pass too long for antonio cannon well, and you see the coaching staff for Central Arkansas fired up. <laughs> Matt Williams is out there on the field, and he's getting called back. The officials say, hey, coach, you got to move it back a little bit. Here are scores from Southland Conference action. Sam Houston State after falling at McNeese one week ago. So far taking it out on Northwestern State, a 17-3 lead. And McNeese looking to stay undefeated in conference play. A 14-3 win down on the bayou in Thibodeau against Nichols. Bruno's second punt. Takes a nice SFA bounce. And the Bears are going to start this ensuing drive just shy of their 30. Now a late flag. Well, there's a lot of jawing going on, David. I mean, these two teams are, are, are just at each other's throats. There's a lot of yakking going on, and it's driving the coaching staffs of each team crazy. And that flag came as that ball was rolling oh, just was, before it was down by the Lumberjacks. And, and how far away from the ball was the flag? Mm -hmm. I mean, it was at least 20 yards away. Illegal substitution, substitution called on SFA. So I guess at the last second they realized, our officiating crew, that 12 men were on the field. Here are the Southland Conference games tonight. Two of the newest Southland Conference yeah. members, HBU and Incarnate Word. In Las Cruces, New Mexico State hosting another new member in Abilene Christian. And then the Southland Conference game of the week on ESPN3. Lincoln Rose with a call from Hammond, Southeastern Louisiana, hosting Lamar. And again, there's just no easy game anymore in the Southland Conference. Lamar, you mentioned giving Sam Houston all they could handle, limiting that powerful Bearcat offense to 14 points a couple of weeks ago. And just last week, UCA needed that late touchdown in Beaumont to knock off the Cardinals. Yeah, it's a come from behind win for the Bears. I mean, again, Lamar playing great and Bill Bradley doing an outstanding job once they've transitioned over to the 3-4 defense. This is his second year there coaching for Ray Woodard and I'll tell you what, they're 0-2 in conference play, but they're giving everybody fits. This has got to be the choppiest first quarter <laughs> that I, I, I don't know that we've ever seen one quite this uh, with this many stoppages of play. Clint Conk gets another explanation. I'm assuming about that illegal substitution call, which moved the ball up from the 29 to the 34. Well, and, and David, the down box, if you look the down box, they have not moved that yet. Hmm. It's still, they're showing fourth and whatever that is. Looks like 19, 20 yards. And they have not moved down. And you see J.C. Harper out on the field. Again, there's just uh, chaos, confusion. Penalty carried a pretty all right. So instead of having another punt, UCA will take it out their own 29. So the ball not supposed to be moved forward to the 34 after the illegal substitution call. Both coaches seem satisfied. <laughs> so we're ready to go now. As Ryan Howard is in at quarterback, he and Taylor Reed have alternated so far this afternoon and Blake Veasley big 205 pound sophomore getting a couple 
I'd say that's one of the things that have been really difficult for the Bears this year is that their run game has been way below the standards mm -hmm. of what Coach Conk and, and Brooks Hollingsworth, offensive coordinator, expect to see. They've just not been able to get that thing going. And you take out guys last year like Terrence Bobo and Al Lasker, and, and you're trying to find some rhythm and get a hot hand in a running back, and they've just had struggles with that all season long. 107 yards rushing a game last in the conference. Howard on the keeper. Fans want a flag. They're going to get a couple. And this will be on the Lumberjacks and an automatic first down coming for UCA. Jordan Burton. David is the one who laid the hit. As Ryan Howard was sliding forward, there's going to be another Lumberjack defender around the legs. But as he's going down or is down, you'll see the hit the shoulder right there by Jordan Burton. And that seems to be, at least as we saw it, a good call. Now, another conference with our crew, well, we've making got sure. Go ahead. Well, I was saying, sorry about it. We have a flag at where the hit was made. Mm -hmm. But then if you look back over there closer to the far side of the field, there's another. Flag. Defense. Oh, he's out. Yeah, Jordan Burton on the target rule, and that brings... And you see that a player cannot target or initiate contact with the crown of his helmet, so it wasn't just that the hit came late, it's where the hit occurred. And you see a player cannot target and in yeah. initiate contact against a defenseless opponent's head or neck with his helmet, well, forearm, head or shoulder. And Ryan Howard sliding down, and he got hit by the shoulder. He didn't get hit with the crown of the helmet by Jordan Burton, but that right shoulder, he leaned in, and you cannot hit above the shoulders, uh, the head area, neck area, with anything. Helmet, crown of helmet, arm, fist, shoulder, whatever. You can't do that. And that's going to draw the targeting. And I, You know, and I've struggled with this a little bit, going through the evolution of this new rule mm -hmm. and, and the difficulty of it. Certainly at, our, at the FCS level, we do not have the benefit of replay. So Jordan Burton is out and will be suspended for the first half of next game. Or no, excuse me, he's out for the, the rest, rest of this game. game. Thank Correct. you. Uh, but the targeting foul cannot be reviewed. So right. you have to be, I guess, play more cautiously. And take a look again. You see as Burton, excuse me, Howard starts to slide. You see the shoulder go in and clearly it hits around the chin, face, mask area, and that's gonna draw the flag every time. In addition to that, as we saw the hit by Burton, it was really unnecessary. Howard had already begun to slide when that hit occurred. Once again, we'll have a conference with members of our officiating crew. I think you used the word choppy, Jay, in terms of how things have gone so far. All right, we'll add three seconds. 201 on the clock. Ryan Howard. And as UCA Bears now with the ball on the SFA 49 yard line. Veasley remains at tailback. Whitehead with a touchdown catch. Receiver in the bottom part of your screen, but it'll be a handoff, and SFA is there. That's a loss of one. Once again, some pushing and shoving as. Tempers have really been high between these two teams from the outset. This has been an emotional series. Six of the last seven have been decided by 12 points or less, including a dramatic win by SFA, 42-37 in Akadochis last season in a monsoon. On second and 11, Blake Gardner, his first catch. Actually, I apologize, that's Smith, a gain of around seven. We talk about the closeness of this series and, and, and the tightness of the games. Three of the last four have been won by the Lumberjacks. Yeah, there's really in this entire series, there's just been one blowout. No matter which team has been ranked, and both teams have been ranked many times. Going deep for Whitehead, just through his hands. Well, good coverage there by Demundre Freeman. Running stride for stride with Whitehead. Ball just outside the reach. Not a bad ball, though, by Ryan Howard. Gets it out there. Right there at the last minute. And you mentioned good coverage by Freeman. He's a very young SFA defense, especially in the back seven. Freeman, a sophomore, I've called Patrick Martin's name a couple of times already. A redshirt freshman. 
Harrison. His second punt. Brooks called fair catch. Let's the ball go behind him and down well. In fact, around the two. A punt of 41 yards and a great job done by Dylan Winfrey. To force SFA to start this ensuing drive very deep in their own territory. Our Southland Conference Offensive Player of the Week. What a job McNeese State has done this season. And Marcus Wilts, the senior running back, has been a part of that. Last week in their big win over Sam Houston State, 122 yards on the ground. Second straight time he's been able to rush for over 100 in a game. Just under six yards a carry against that stout Bearcat defense. Some trouble on the Ooh, handoff. Stout Full, defense. Forward progress. Fortunately for SFA, it means they'll at least still have this ball at the one. Well, Matt Hornbuckle, number 99, is right in the middle of that, playing off that defensive tackle position. He just absolutely stood up. The lineman for the Lumberjacks, and that was a, it was a pretty daunting play. Two men back with Attaway as he'll take this deep snap, five yards. Deep in the end zone, he'll find Brooks and can't get to the outside. Winfrey, a nice tackle. Southland Conference Defensive Player of the Week will stick with McNeese after their great win over Sam Houston State. Aaron Sam, the junior corner, 10 solo tackles, a career high, two for loss as the Cowboys undefeated in conference play after a victory over the Bearcats. What a job Matt Viator is doing in Lake Charles. On third and ten, the dump off to Boyd, and Nothing perhaps he got a yard, maybe just that, in SFA, as this first quarter is going to run down. Justin Hurd on that stop, David, again, just coming out of that linebacker spot. He's a solidifying anchor for this defense, comes up with a huge play on third down. And SFA will have to punt from their own end zone when we return. A lumberjack offense averaging 39 points a game. But this Bears defense, one of the best in the conference, holding them to three through the game's first 15 minutes. witness bullying they want to help but don't know how teach your kids how to be more than a bystander visit stopbullying.gov thanks for calling the ged pep talk center jerry Silla speaking your level seven in your face pep talk i can keep pushing believe me, i'm good at it but at some point you're gonna need to start pushing yourself See, once you've got your ged diploma You'll feel so good about yourself. You tell them. You can't change your past, but you can definitely change your future. That makes me so happy, I'm ready to bust out a dance. Mr. Trejo, if I transfer this guy to you, my gentle technique isn't really working. You need something a little more... Persuasive? Yes. You listen, and you listen good. Hey, where's my sandwich? Terry? Terry! Take it from me to King DMC. It's a real cool thing to get your GED. Get that diploma! Now hold on and we'll find you three GED classes. Capiche? Whatever motivation you need, we've got a pep talk for you. Get your GED pep talk and find free classes at yourged.org. People think I'm trash. But they're wrong. Today I'm just an aluminum can. One day, I could be a stadium. Big moment here to begin the second quarter as it'll be Nick Bruno punting it away. He will catch the deep snap nine yards deep in his end zone. Clay Murphy is back for UCA. But in SFA territory, and let's see Shea Walker if the Bears bring the heat on special teams going for the block. Well, it's imperative if you're Stephen F. Austin to get a good snap and get the punt off quickly. And they did come after it, David. Bruno gets it off quickly, but off the side of his foot. However, it'll take a very nice SFA roll. In fact, 
looked like it just cut past midfield. I don't know how, but Nick Bruno got that punt off for 49 yards. Well, I, I think the first 25 of that was in the air, and the, <laughs> and the rest of it was on the ground. But a great job by Bruno getting that kick off quickly. And he has a tendency to be one of those rugby style guys. So you'll see him kind of fade around a little bit to his right. And he's used to kind of hitting it where the ball's spinning forward. So when it hits the ground, it does take a favorable roll. He was able to do it on that play. Ryan Howard will begin this drive at quarterback for UCA. Seven of nine passing in the first quarter, 73 yards. And the lone touchdown in this game, a pass from Howard to Courtney Whitehead. He'll throw on first down and going deep, wanting Desmond Lewis, and he has him. A great play, and staying in bounds. No, they'll rule him out. But in the red zone, just shy of the 10, a gain right. of 40. Okay, we're going to switch genres. We're going to switch sports. Think of Willie Mays <laughs> when you look at the catch that Desmond Lewis comes up with on the sideline. David, he was running with his head tilted all the way back, almost like a pass dispenser open way back over the top and he lets the ball just float right into his hands. My goodness, what a great job of concentrating and catching the ball. Showing your age, sir. I haven't had Pez in about 20 years. Taylor Reed will keep it at quarterback. Couple of great blocks from his offensive line. A dive to the end zone and he's got it. A touchdown for Central Arkansas. His first rushing touchdown of the season, and the Bears take a 13 to 3 lead. When we talk about the quick strike offense of the Lumberjacks, and how about the University of Central Arkansas Bears? You'll see Taylor Reed as he takes it, clearly running the entire way. Gets a nice clear out block by Cole Carruthers, and then he's able to stretch the ball over the pylon for the touchdown. You bet. An extra point coming. By Camara. Up and good. Lumberjacks have the first points of the game, but the Bears have answered with 14 straight. Lumberjacks to get the ball when we return. Eddie Camara and the Bears up. I'm one on Monkey Guy. The chance of being involved in a robbery is 1 in 757. The chances of being struck by lightning. One in seven hundred and fifty thousand. Please fasten your seatbelts for unexpected turbulence. The chances of being a victim in an airline crash? One in twenty-nine million. Hey, could I get some peanuts? The chances of being involved in a car crash are far greater than lightning strikes and plane crashes. And if you are texting while driving, your risk of crash increases 23 times. Now, I may be an unlucky guy, but I don't have to be part of that statistic, and neither do you. Drive responsibly. Wow, these are really good. You act surprised. Practice makes perfect. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. Taylor Reed got the touchdown run, but Shea, it was Ryan Howard with this great pass that set it up. Well, I really do. I love the concentration here by Desmond. Look at the height, the air on that ball. And Lewis was running downfield, looking back over his shoulder. Actually, both looking back over his shoulders. <laughs> that, that was just an incredible job of Lewis concentrating and hauling that ball in. 14-3, the UCA lead. It's right on the return, just past the 25-yard line. SFA, this will be their fourth drive. They have hurt themselves tremendously with penalties. In fact, Shea, eight penalties already for the Lumberjacks for 61 yards. It's an offense which, as we well know, can perform very well, but they've really hurt themselves with some self-inflicted wounds so far. Well, and you got to give a lot of credit to the defensive front and making this Lumberjack offense earn the yards. And again, we see that front four 
not giving up much real estate in the run game. This is West. Hanging tough again there with Matt Hornbuckle coming in. And again, everybody's on the bottom of the pile there, getting up Markeith Gaines, uh, definitely a leader on that defense. But plays like that, when you only get a yard or two in this offense, it, it just stretches it and strains it a little bit. You see Brady Attaway's numbers already 18 pass attempts. That's a good completion percentage, just 90 yards. Some trickery here. Tyler Boyd going deep, has a man wide open, and DJ Ward looking to beat Winfrey into the end zone, and he'll do it for 73 yards. My goodness, Tyler Boyd. He is now two for two on the season. He had a 75-yard touchdown pass to Mike Brooks when they were playing up in Lubbock against the Texas Tech Red Raiders. And D.J. Ward, the recipient. That way he hands the ball inside, and you see Tyler Boyd, he just floats back. He's got a wide receiver all alone down there. That's a great play call. Love that. As a former receiver, are those the hardest catches to make when there's no one around you whatsoever? No, those are the most <laughs> fun to make. <laughs> Looked like Ward bobbled it for a moment, been able to haul it in. And that's what they needed, that score. The Wigs extra point through, and it's a 14-10 bear lead here in Conway. Let's go down to the purple and gray stripes, where SFA's quite pleased at the moment, Aaron Cofield. Well, the rain has just started to come down. I did want to share with you that series right there. That's what Coach Harbor has been wanting out of his team this whole game. He did put an emphasis on the tempo. He said he wants his team to put their foot on the pedal and keep it there. And perhaps that series right there will get things going for them to start getting that offense clicking as we've seen it do earlier this year. Thank you, Aaron. Absolutely. And from the first play, he wants that pedal to be on the metal and sometimes bringing out the trickeration in at least the seven points for the Lumberjacks, making it a one-score game early in the second quarter. There's J.C. Harper. And what a job he's done. And I love how open both he and Clint Conk were with us about their teams, about their philosophies. You know, both these coaches have known each other for so long. We mentioned how uh, good friends they are. And they know what's coming. It's just a question of can you stop it? And that's hard to do, stop these offenses. Well, it certainly is. But, you know, you think about, again, what you're talking about, David, is, is the respect that these two coaches have for each other as peers. And, and it was impressive to hear both of them speak so kindly of the other. Jatavius Wilson on the return. Got some room. Good haul. Couple of nice blocks as he'll take it to the outside. And slips on this wet turf as Aaron mentioned the rain coming down and that probably a factor but still Central Arkansas will have this in SFA territory. But Jatavius Wilson very electric he's another young guy a freshman how about that return he, he hits the Jets and he's got the speed bounces it out you'll see him as he's going up he sees the crease there he pushes it far enough up the field and then he bounces out to the left then right here he tries to make a cutback a little bit of the slick field got him, but I'll tell you what, the Bears are starting with great field position. Both Willie Matthews and Kelton Warren will be in the backfield with Ryan Howard on this first down play. Matthews did not play last week. Staff infection in his elbow. He will get the call, or actually I apologize, this is Warren on the carry, getting one maybe close to two. Warren, a 15-yard run in the first quarter. Short gain on that first down carry. Freshman from Arlington. Second down and nine. A Central Arkansas team needed almost the full 60 minutes to put 26 on the board, and that was enough to beat Lamar last week to even their Southland mark at one and one. SFA a victory over Nichols. As you saw right here, the Lumberjacks one and one in conference. Howard going deep again. Desmond Lewis is open with the catch and a score. 45 yards. His third receiving touchdown of the season, Desmond Lewis puts the Bears up 10. I'll tell you what, David, this play starts out with outstanding blocking by the front. Jordan Kirsch doing a good job of holding off that rush, and that allowed Ryan Howard all the time that he needed. And again, he throws the ball beautifully down there, and Desmond Lewis on the separation speed. You can see he has a long of 75 so far, but I'll tell you what. He has made some incredible catches 
in the first half of this game. And got the matchup on the linebacker, Colin Garrett, as the Camara extra point is through, and UCA back up by 11, a 21 to 10 score. Well, I've had a little bit of a slow start offensively now. <laughs> the fireworks are happening. We have had three touchdowns in 90 seconds. Time now for our Justins classroom champions and for SFA senior offensive lineman Ryan Chambers. A GPA of 3.62, the kinesiology major from Nashville, Arkansas, a National Football Foundation Scholar Athlete Award semifinalist. And you see not just preseason all Southland Conference second team this year, but academic all Southland Conference in 2012. For Central Arkansas, Ryan Howard. He's had quite a game. Two touchdown passes. The junior quarterback, a GPA of 3.70, majoring in management. Twice he's been on the Southland Conference Academic Honor Roll and a Student Athlete Advisory Council member. Ryan Chambers and Ryan Howard are Justin's classroom champions. David Salzman, Shea Walker from the purple and gray stripes, where we saw in the first quarter a total of 10 points. And as I just mentioned, in the last 90 seconds, we've seen 21. Plenty more to come, I'm sure. It'll be Eugene Wright on the return from just shy of the five. West the block, but the Bears are there on special teams. Lumberjacks will start this inside their own 20. And if you're SFA, obviously, just keep things going. Well, you do keep things going, but I tell you right now, this, this Lumberjack offense has been hindered by the Bear defense, David. And, and if you think about that last play, a little bit of trickery, right? So you had mm -hmm. the inside handoff, but Tyler Boyd comes back, and he throws a, the wide receiver reverse pass for the touchdown. A great play executed well, but this SFA offense hasn't really been able to get on track, certainly like we saw last week against Nichols. After the fake on the handoff, here's D.J. Ward, who had the big touchdown catch. Gain of about seven. That's a good point you make, Shea. Just three points scored conventionally, if you will, by this Lumberjack offense so far. Boy, and on that drive, as you talk about, it was a 19, 18 play drive that they went down to get the field goal. But you know, this Bears defense making the sledding a little bit tough. Clint Conk really wanted his front four to get pressure on Brady out of way. And you mentioned it a couple of times already, Shea. They've done a very nice job. And stuffing the run for just a yard, forcing third and short. Yeah, T.J. Randall, Markeith Gaines in there again, just, just plugging things up. Randall, 6'3", 291 pounds, and Gaines, 6'2", 265 pounds. A couple of fire plugs down there close to that line of scrimmage and not giving up any real estate. Now it's Keith Lawson on the carry. He remains at tailback. Attaway in the pistol, third down and two. Can Lawson get to, getting to the edge, and the lean forward may not be enough. Ooh, it's going to be short by maybe a yard, half a yard. Bobby Watkins, you see him there, the sophomore from Dallas with a tremendous stop. Kept bouncing the ball outside, and give a lot of credit to that Bear defense, David, for stringing the play out at two and three different levels before Bobby Watkins comes up and is able to make the stop short of the first down. Once again, we will see Nick Bruno on to punt. Got a nice bounce for a 49-yard punt last time. Already his fourth punt in this overcast afternoon. Well, Nothing doing as Clay Murphy was wrapped up right away. Forward progress will put UCA at their own 30 when we return as the Bears look to extend an 11-point lead. The State Farm Southland Conference mascot challenge is back. This year's field is bigger and stronger. Willie the Wildcat. Bruce D. Bear. Mingo the Husky. Red the Cardinal. Big Red the Cardinal. Rowdy the Cowboy. Lafitte the Instigator. Colonel Tulu. Vic the Demon, Eli the Eagle, Rumi the Lion, the Lumberjack, Izzy the Islander, and defending champion, Sammy the Bearcat. 
$5,000 is on the line. Vote for your favorite on the Southland Conference Facebook page. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm on it. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. You're covered, Kevin. Thanks, Melinda. Uh, wait, I have blah blah insurance, so person, come help. Hey, Grandma. Six callers ahead of us, Jimmy. You're not helping. Having insurance isn't the same as having State Farm. They're to help you anytime, anywhere, anyway. That's getting to a better state. Contact your local State Farm agent. UCA has scored on their last two drives. Drives of 51 and 46 yards, but just needed two plays each for those scores. They'll need 70 to get to pay dirt and add to their 21 to 10 lead over SFA. A key game for both teams. Lumberjacks and Bears one and one in conference. Nice job. Kelton Warren was tripped up to prevent a big gain, and there's a flag on the far side of the field. Hippolyte on the stop. Well, that was a great play by Hippolyte coming off that linebacker spot you mentioned earlier. Oh, here we go on the flag. It's offsides Man. on the Lumberjacks. Penalty number nine for SFA. We're and, early in the second. And, and for Coach Harper, think about how frustrating this is. All right, you, you, you come up with a really good play on first down. Hippolyte comes in, takes the legs right out from the running back for a no gain. And instead, the penalty now, and it's first and five. Enough to drive you crazy. <laughs> Ryan Howard, the quarterback. Oh, and my. SFA right there on the stop. In fact, that loss goes all the way back to the original line of scrimmage as Warren had no room to run. If we get to take another look at that, with the play of Patrick Martin, number 14, the freshman. Take a look. He's going to sell out. He blows up the running play, takes down the offensive lineman, DJ Appy. And, and brings down the running back as well and for a four-yard loss, no less. That's only a redshirt freshman, by the way. Warren out. Matthews in. Howard will throw. And that pass tipped. He was looking for Matthews underneath. Boy, and Darren Robinson bearing down right in the face of Ryan Howard. Defensive end doing a good job there. Robinson, there's Shavian Hatton, number 90. Solid front four for SFA. Three juniors and senior Malcolm Maddox. UCA one of three on thirds, needing nine yards to keep this drive going. Oh, find number five. Desmond Lewis, if you're the Lumberjacks defense. 45-yard touchdown catch, the last drive. And coming is the Bleds, and they get him. Ooh, the sack doing. by Ishmael Miles, the junior from Sexy, and a loss of 10. His fourth sack on the season, 6'2", 228 pounds, and I don't know how you miss him, but the Bears' front missed him. And he did a great job of getting back to the quarterback. Ryan Howard, no time, no opportunity to throw at all. No, facing being down three scores, I think an understatement to say how important that defensive stop was. Yeah, you're right, David. That was a big stop, three and out. And with Mike Brooks standing on his 45-yard line, you look like it's a great opportunity for good field position. Harrison, rugby-style punt. And SFA's going to have great field position. In fact, in UCA territory, just a punt of 27 yards. I know you and Randy have done this week after week. It has been fun celebrating the 50th anniversary of the Southland Conference. The all-time football team presented by Mid-South Bank and I get to choose here this week. Offensive yeah. lineman Marcus Spears of Northwestern State. And you see the accolades. Three-time All-Southland Conference first team. An 11-year veteran in the NFL. But he is only one of two FCS players ever voted to the Football Writers Association of America All-America team. Jerry Rice, the other. And so Spears, an amazing college career. And uh, he gets my vote for the all-time Southland Conference team as Marquise Mosley makes the first down grade. Well, well and let me tell you something, first-timer. Not a bad job. <laughs> I appreciate Not that. Not a bad job. Thank An you. excellent pick. And a quick handoff. And not able to get around the corner. Being brought down is Fred Ford. Good tackle made by Marvin Mitchell. They will say it's enough for the first. The ball at the UCA 37. Brady Attaway hoping to make it a one-score game. Here's four, the sophomore from Kirbyville, stacked up. Gained maybe a couple. And Ford out of that battery of running backs. 
for the Lumberjacks is probably the best, if you will, kind of inclement weather runner. Joshua West is a breakaway scat back type. Keith Lawson the same way, but Fred Ford's got a little bit more heft and he runs downhill at you pretty hard. I think Keith Lawson now may be in the game. Quick pass and a man open Brooks into the red zone. Finally getting him out of bounds was Marvin Mitchell. What a great strike from Anaway for 20. And here's the thing, David. This is what drives people crazy, coaches crazy. This offense for Stephen F. Austin has been that us use the word choppy, a little lethargic, and now it takes one drive to come up with some big plays, and all of a sudden they're knocking on the door. Looking for Thomas. There was some tussling, no flag as that pass is incomplete. Coverage by Marcus Peters. You like the call it the spatial awareness of Brady Attaway when he got that ball out to Mike Brooks. He just did it so quickly. And before you know it, you're knocking on the door and you're down near the 15-yard uh, line. He'll throw again underneath to Brooks. Wrapped up right away. Just in love there. And it looks like the Lumberjacks will be a couple of yards short of the first down marker. Get it down to the seven-yard line. They need to get just inside the six-yard line for a first down. And we've got a Central Arkansas defender down. It's number 28, Justin Love. That is Love who well, just made what. the tackle. What a player he's been. 227 career tackles coming into this one. Well, and he was a co-Southland Conference freshman of the year when he was a freshman. Had six interceptions, returned three of those for touchdowns. But he has been a stalwart for this Bears defense. UCA. Doesn't need any more injuries. Of course, you can see that for every team, but we've talked about the injuries that Clint Conk squad has had on offense. Winbrick Smothers, last season's Offensive Player of the Year, out with a broken ankle. Chase Dixon, broken right leg, and this is good to see as Love walks off the field on his own power. Well, you can find the Southland Conference on Twitter at Southland Sports, hashtag Southland Strong, the Southland Conference. A tremendous presence over Twitter and Facebook. In fact, like the Southland on Facebook, you can go to Facebook.com slash Southland Conference. Well, maybe we should text that information over to Randy <laughs> McElvoy as he's trying to uh, locate the broadcast. Big third down here. Brooks looking for a lane. Won't get there. Tremendous pursuit by the Bears. Justin Hurd on the tackle. Never lost sight of Mike Brooks. And Brooks is an incredibly dangerous runner, David. And as he comes off from that left side, as he's navigating his way around to the right, you just saw Justin Hurd tracking and making sure that he was staying stride for stride with him. Now fourth and about two. Looks like SFA is going to use a timeout. Bears actually called oh, the timeout. Clint did it. All right. And what was interesting, J.C. Harper never hesitated. He kept that offense on the field for fourth and two. A field goal, of course, makes it a one-score game, although, as you see, still 7.59 to go in the second quarter. But J.C. Harper looking to convert a key fourth down. No easy games in the Southland Conference, and, of course, that goes for SFA next week. Randy will rejoin you, Shea. You'll be in Reliance Stadium for the Battle of the Piney Woods. That has been a fun affair at Reliance Stadium between Stephen F. Austin and Sam Houston State, a 3 o'clock kick, and then last home game in Nacogdoches for the Lumberjacks against McNeese State, followed by road games in Beaumont against Lamar, and the game for Chief Cato in Nacogdoches, S of A, and Northwestern State. Well, I think you probably said it most accurately. No easy games in the Southland Conference. Everybody's getting better, and you have to keep up in your game, and that's what the leaders at the top of the conference are finding out is that those middle-run teams can give you problems. Quickly, what do you think of this call here? Going for it, fourth and two. I love it. On the road. You need the points. They'll look to the freshman and Joshua get West, who won't get there. Or is he? He made a great second effort, but he needed to get to the five, and he looks short. Let's see, getting off the bottom of the pile there, you see T.J. Randall just absolutely sold out on his back, and they're saying it's going to be just short. I've got, got to believe we're going to get a measurement here. That is a good mark, though. The nose of the ball is ahead of the six from this angle, but as you can see, the celebration on the Bears' sideline, UCA has held, and they will take over. Uh, great defensive stand there. Again, T.J. Randall doing a great job out of that defensive tackle spot. Ends up on his back. So you figure if he's on his back that there might have been, Josh West might have been able to push that forward for a first down, but too many Bear defenders. Markeith Gaines again as well as Hornbuckle 
Mm, just clogging up the works there, and that's a big stop. 20th time, J.C. Harper has gone for it on fourth down this season, and that unsuccessful. Out on the flat, Wilson with a lot of room. A first down and more. Well, I tell you, his top speed is so impressive. Jatavius Wilson, he caught the ball, David, on a little swing screen pass. But as soon as he did, he hit the Jets. Take a look here. He gets a good block downfield, and he bounces to the outside, and he's off to the race. If he didn't get pushed out of bounds there, he's going to the house, and we've got Taylor Reed now has checked into the game. You see Wilson's numbers. There's 28 catches coming in, second on the team, had four big ones, and the Bears win over Lamar. Reed handing it off. Warren getting just past the 20. We've seen more of Warren and Blake Beasley than Willie Matthews. Matthews, 214 yards rushing, but as mentioned, did not play last week with a staph infection in his elbow. And this young man, Kelton Warren, his red shirt stayed on him until the middle of the game last week in Boma. So, and Ryan Howard checking back into the game, but it has absolutely been, David, running back by committee by the Bears all season. Willie Matthews, Blake Beasley. Kelton Brown, Jacoby Walker, all of them getting an opportunity. Going deep, Damian Watts, a tremendous leaping grab. Out of bounds in SFA territory. 32 yards for the junior from Texarkana. I tell you what, quarterbacks are having a good game. Ryan Howard's having a good game, but these wide receivers are just outstanding today. This is the second time we've seen a ball go down that left hash. It just, absolutely, just great concentration, control of the body, making sure you stay in bounds. Beautifully executed. He beats to Mundre Freeman. Warren. Maybe a loss. In fact, he does lose one. Let me talk about all these injuries. We haven't even mentioned Danzel Williams, sophomore running back for UCA. He is out with an abdominal strain, so that's another one added to the list. So they just have to have so many guys come in and play that spot. But I tell you what, you think about this uh, Bears offense answering the bell. Uh, all those injuries that we talked about, predominantly on the offensive side. Great job of Beasley handling the blitzing linebacker, and Howard throws it away. Well, we heard the hit from up here. Darren Robinson coming on the on the blitz, a little twist stunt. There's a couple of defenders now for Stephen F. Austin down. Slow to get up. And looks to be Hippolyte, their leading tackler. 56 tackles coming in, the senior from a great program in Orange at West Orange Stark. There's the numbers for Ryan Howard. 200 yards passing, and a lot of those yards you've mentioned, Shay, just throw it up in the air, let your athletic receiver go up and grab it. Well, the TD to interception ratio is exactly the way Coach Conk wants it, but uh, you talk about Artavius Hippolyte out of West Orange Stark. Great player for the Mustangs. Did a lot of offensive. He had over 4,300 yards of offensive production mm -hmm. in high school. 21-3A player of the year. He was a quarterback there, if yep. I'm not mistaken. Yep, he was. Today's over there playing linebacker with an attitude. How about that? <laughs> Ortavius Hippolyte, and you see walking gingerly off the field. Let's hope we can see him back in. One of the leaders of this SFA defense, and they need him. And there's no doubt, and J.C. Harper admits his defense has struggled, and particularly a lot of his younger players. He says a lot of times our defense has just been in the wrong spots. Third and 11. Look out, Howard wrapped up and thrown Ooh, that's down. That's in the right spot by Malcolm Maddox. <laughs> you see how quickly he closed on Ryan Howard. Check him here at the top of your screen, left side of the screen. He runs right through it, and man, right now, I don't know how he hangs onto that ball. But he took a big shot, Malcolm Maddox. And talked about how Hippolyte's a leader in this defense, and Maddox as well, the senior from Newton, increasing that sack total, a huge sack. Two straight, very important defensive stops by this SFA defense. And preventing it from going any further was Brooks upon a 39 yards. Little dangerous, but SFA will have it from their own 20 when we return. So I got this new family and I don't know what it is about this one, but she can't seem to put down that toy all day long. Tap, 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 tap. Oh, and she even talks to it. She talks to that more than she talks to him. What's up, bro? Nice shirt. 
Who's she talking to? Her mom? She talks to her mom a lot. A single ember from a wildfire can travel over a mile. That ember can ignite and destroy your home or community. You can't control where that ember will land. Only what happens before it does. Visit fireadapted.org to learn how you can help protect your community from wildfires. Being a dad can be tough. No, no, no. What do you mean she's not coming? When's the fairy princess coming? Any minute now. <laughs> but when you're willing to do anything... It is I, Groove's Zinker Bell. Yeah. Okay, time for cake. It's always worth it. I know it's really you, girl. I'm just pretending for the other kids. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Call 877-4-DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. 2110 UCA, we've already seen over 400 combined passing yards and just 30 combined rushing yards. Well, who's thrown for more yards, though? <laughs> That's the story. Pretty even, actually. Yeah. Brady Attaway, 18 to 23 for 133. And of course, we can't forget the 73 yard touchdown pass from Tyler Boyd to DJ Ward for the Lumberjacks' only touchdown. Gain of close to four on that first down carry by Keith Lawson. Or actually, Fred Ford. Lumberjacks hurrying it up as they usually do, averaging 90 plays a game coming in. Out of way to throw for the 24th time. Finds his man and Cannon, the East Carolina transfer. Ball loose, but he was down first and about a yard shy of the first down marker. Sixth catch of the year for Cannon. And the sophomore. Already third and one. Boyd, first down, slipping through tackles. Boy, a great run after the catch. Brought down just shy of the 40. He got nine yards. That was all on his own. Yeah, and you see him after he made that catch, David, and after the run, he looks back over the sideline. He gives it a strong fist pump. Tyler Boyd fired up. Brady Attaway and the Lumberjacks looking to make it a one-score game. Another throw. Ward, good blocks in front of him by his colleagues at wideout. Nine more yards. Look like Dylan Winfrey may have carried him out of bounds, but I like the way that that play was finished. Running hard. Glenn Conk says somehow we have to get Brady Attaway off of his rhythm, and at least so far in the early part of this drive, and the Lumberjacks in a great rhythm, just shy of midfield. Going deep and looking for war just out of his reach. Yeah, you know what? That's a throw that Brady Attaway would like to have back because he had his wide receiver open and he just kind of, he threw it a little nonchalantly and put a little bit of air under it. That's one you want to kind of settle down on and put a little bit more pace and drill it right down into the, the to the number nine where DJ Ward could snag that ball because he was open in between those two defenders. Yep, good point. Winfrey got there just a step late and now third down and one. Ward, the catch, moving the chains again, now in UCA territory, a gain of 11. There you see Brady Attaway putting a little pace on the ball, and I love the way that they are so quick to get set and ready for the next play. For the carry. Good ankle tackle, but still a nice gain on first down. I like those long strides there by Fred Ford. He kind of looked like he kind of almost skipped through the hole, but he was able to pick up four yards and just hitting it very quickly. Justin Hurd, Ricky Wyatt were both there. Working quickly, out of way, and not able to get out of his cut soon enough was Cannon, and it'll be third down. But now Shea, third down. And about six yards for J.C. Harper's Lumberjacks. Well, 37% on third down, and that may be a little bit misleading because they don't do a whole lot of third downs. Looking for the big conversion, and let's throw the hands incomplete. Well, Looking for Boyd. Good coverage out on the corner, and Boyd's feet slipped out from underneath him. Number two on the coverage, Marvin Mitchell was right there, and I think that forced Attaway to kind of throw the ball low and inside, and I think... Boyd was expecting it to be on the outside. That's when his feet slipped out from under him. Offense remains on the field, fourth and six. And that pass too 
short wow. for Boyd. You know, he also had Braxton Beard underneath, went for Boyd instead, and the Lumberjacks turned the ball over on downs. That's a lot of confidence in your defense, Randy. Or, excuse me, David, apologize. I apologize with three minutes, 21 seconds left, going forward on fourth down. That's a gutsy call, and say, hey, defense, stand Let, up and do your thing. Let's go down to Aaron Cofield. Well, guys, as we near the end of the first half, just wanted to share what's coming up on the Mid-South Bank Halftime Report. We will go to the Southland Conference Digital Network Studios for an update with Megan Clementi. I will also speak with Central Arkansas Athletic Director Dr. Brad Teague. We'll have first half highlight stats, and we'll watch the Bears marching band homecoming performance. Guys? Thank you, Aaron. As you saw, the deep throw by Howard. Got Blake Gardner turned around. There was some contact, but no flag. But we have seen that play, and I think it's outstanding that Ryan Howard so early in his starting here for Central Arkansas, David, he is able to pick up where that man coverage is. And we've seen him throw the ball and just kind of heave it down there so his receivers can go out. We've seen Desmond Lewis come up with big catches as, as Courtney Whitehead. Blake Gardner not able to come down with that one. Taylor Reed now handing it off. Strong run. Of about three yards, and that was Matthews, the junior from Bartlett, Tennessee. You see Matthews stocky at 5'9, 189, averaging four yards a carry coming in. Lumberjacks have two timeouts left, will not use one here as the Bears face third and seven. Ryan Howard back in at quarterback. Hippolyte is back in for the Lumberjacks. Blitz coming. Again, a floater up in the air. And flags down. Is that pass intended for Whitehead? Three flags down, in fact. Almost in synchronization, too. Look where they're lined up. Clearly, field judge, line judge, back judge all saw the same thing. Testing two freshmen in Eugene Wright and J.C. Franklin. There's Wright. I like the aggressive play calling, though, by the SFA Lumberjacks. Don't let Howard sit back there and pick you apart on third down. Make him make a decision, and then you have to flip the ball over, or flip that coin over to the other side and say, what a great job by him recognizing where the man coverage is and getting the ball out there where you're giving your wide receiver an opportunity. Comes up with a pass interference penalty, and it does make it a first down. Well, I didn't expect Whitehead to have to come back for the ball on that floater, but the contact leading to the flag and now Clint Conk will call timeout. Bears will have one left. Let's go down to Aaron Cofield and in an injury update. Well guys, uh, Justin Love is out for the game. I'm told that he has a concussion so they will hold him out for the rest of the game. Wow. The, hit, the hits just keep on coming for this Bears team. Yeah, thank you. You're talking about a senior safety. 227 tackles, 12 interceptions in his career, three Pick six is the second most in UCA history, and there he is. Looks okay, but again, you got to go through the protocol, and if he's showing concussion-like symptoms, you keep him out. That's exactly what the Bears will do. Absolutely. It's the, it's not the, only the prudent thing to do, but it's uh, it's something that has to be done. Mm -hmm. And you think about it, he's a first-team All-Southland Conference player. Mm -hmm. And again, for a defense that has had to operate without Justin Hurd, there's the suspensions you mentioned earlier, and some of the other changes they've had to do. I mean, he was really, the, he is the anchor for that defensive secondary. It'll be interesting to see against a pass-happy offense like the Lumberjacks. They'll definitely recognize that he's out of the game and see if they take some shots downfield. Now first and 10 after the pass interference call. Howard. Great job coming back to the ball. That's Whitehead. Flag is down. If the catch is allowed, that is enough for a first. Uh, Courtney Whitehead, 6'3", 217 pounds. Masterful over there on the sidelines using that big body. The average is 14 yards a catch, but let's see what the, officiate, or what the call is. The only penalty on the Bears so far today on special teams. Number five, pass to the face, offense, number 71. 15 yard penalty. Play first down. Cole the left guard, is called for the personal foul, and the ball's moved back into Bear territory. Well, hands to the face mask. It's so incredibly hard for these offensive linemen when you've got big physical defensive linemen aggressively coming at you, and you're trying to retreat into pass mode, and your hands get out on them and mm -hmm. extended. But I think that's a great call. You cannot get the hands on the face above the chin. 
You see now first and 25 for Ryan Howard and the ECA Bears. Another blitz coming. Howard getting in the way. Whitehead slipping one, not the second tackle, able to fall forward and get close to the original line of scrimmage. About a 12 yard gain. Uh, tell you what, Whitehead being just a dominant wide receiver so far in the first half of this game and in the poise. Ryan Howard again, the pressure. J.C. Harp and Lumberjacks are dialing up. They're bringing the blitzes. They're throwing the kitchen sink at him, and he's checking down and finding his open receivers and his hot receivers. Clint Cox says that Ryan Howard is in command of what we're doing. Coach's son played for his father in Vestavia Hills, Alabama. Another shot deep, this time for Lewis. And is that picked off? Yes, it yes. is. On the tip drill, SFA gets the turnover. And the interception by Trey Valier. Well, Patrick Martin is the one who makes the play. Running stride for stride. He does a great job. He puts the hands up exactly when the wide receiver's going for it. And Valier, the recipient, take a look here, going down the sideline. Again, this is very similar to what we've seen Ryan Howard do most of the first half. You see the hike on the ball. But love the way that Patrick Martin plays out with that right hand. Red shirt freshman at Spring to Caney High School. And Valier comes up with a nice grab, toe taps it down, and that gives the Lumberjack offense the ball back with a minute 41 on the clock. And they still have two of their timeouts left. Two of their timeouts, and of course, as you know, the clock will stop on first downs as they move the chain. So still plenty of time here. Out of way once at all, but in triple coverage and sails over all of them. <laughs> I like the moxie there by Brady Attaway. He really didn't have anything, David, underneath. And as he looked down, he said, you know what? I'm going to give it a shot. He had a one white jersey smothered, sandwiched, covered. Sounds like an order from the Waffle House. <laughs> with three defenders around him. I guess if, if you want to miss in triple coverage, you want to miss long. And that's what Brady Attaway did. He is 20 to a 32 passing. Here comes another pass attempt. Nice job coming back to the football. Aaron Thomas has a first and out of bounds. And I tell you what, now we've seen Brady Attaway in this game, in this half, short hop a couple of balls he threw a perfect pass and that ball traveled a long way before Aaron Thomas was able to come down with the catch but he was over on the right hash mark he threw that ball 15 17 yards downfield all the way to the opposite end of the field on the number side West is the tailback and a whistle from the far side of the field the clock was running and remember Thomas Went out of bounds after making the catch, so they should have some time. Please reset the game clock to one minute, 27 seconds. One, two, seven. So six seconds added. And now 127 still left. And you said, Shay, two timeouts for SFA. They still have them. Two receivers there, and Ward makes the catch. It sailed over the head of Boyd. Ward came back for a 20-yard game. It's hard to think about. Again, the arm strength here of Brady Attaway. He's now on the left hash mark, David, and he he almost just kind of it looked like he targeted the ball, and he threw it perfectly, and Marcus Peters, defender, just not able to come up with it. Ward with a great catch. Now in UCA territory. Here comes the blitz. Throw to the sideline is dropped. Oh, another great throw, though. Ward thought he should have had it, the junior from the Woodlands. Second down, and the clock stopped with 67 seconds left. Marcus Peters there on the coverage. Kind of one of those rangy defensive backs, 6'2", 204 pounds. Second and 10. Look at the numbers for Brady Attaway. I know you would love to have played with a quarterback who had 35 pass attempts in the first half, yeah, Shay. You bet. <laughs> and, and continues to throw. Flag down and a great catch. That was by Boyd. The flag is at the line of scrimmage. I'll tell you what, that is a play that you can tell this Lumberjack offense just has so much confidence in. This is the third time that we have seen it. Ward's come up with two of the grabs. Holy offense, number 68. Replay second down. Anthony Pullins, the center, freshman from Cedar Hill. Well, and this one, unfortunately, is a great catch. Look at J.C. Harper. Not happy at all. He said, how can he hold when the, when the ball gets out that quick? How can he hold? Nine penalties, 90 yards now for SFA. And it's second down and 20. Ball at the 41. Trying to throw it underneath, and he hey. did a great job spiking that ball down volleyball style to prevent any sort of interception. And that's going to make Chris Mikowski happy because now he's covering two events. He's seeing a football game, and he saw a volleyball play. <laughs> 
That was Mark Keith Gaines, the senior. Heads up play by Attaway, though, to knock that down. Gaines, that ball, because he had, that ball was high enough in the air where there were three purple shirts around it. You know, with UCA, they're going to have great defensive ends. No exception this season with Gaines and Jonathan Woodard. They've had three defensive ends drafted since 2007. Third and long, it is Ward, well shy of the first. Getting out of bounds actually helps UCA, stops the clock with 43 seconds remaining. When well, you talk about these wide receivers blocking downfield, Mike Brooks absolutely throws what we call the D cleater. <laughs> he just he made an incredible block. Allowing the receiver to catch the ball, or not only catch the ball, but pick up some additional yards. The SFA has called timeout on fourth down and long, but fourth and 14, Shay. You have 42 seconds left. Okay. UCA has one timeout left. I think too risky for JP, uh, JC Harper to, to go for, but let's see what the Lumberjacks do as they break the huddle. It's amazing, isn't it, that SFA just has 10 points because of the amount of plays they've run. But UCA, one of the best defenses in the Southland, has had an answer. Well, and, and historically, the, the Bears play the best defense in the conference. They are constantly, they, they've led the conference several years since, the, since they joined the Southland Conference. They've led it, but they've also, they're always at the top. They're either the number one or two team in, in, in many defensive categories, maybe not all of them, but certainly in many of them. And just again, very physical. And that's what you know you're going to get that. And, and Coach Harper said that when, when he was talking about what they had to do is they know, knowing that we're not going to get much. We're going to have to earn our yards. And Bears defense so far making them do it. Looks like they've got a little bit of confusion. Clearly, this is the punt that they don't believe is going to happen because nobody's deep. Nick Bruno. Good kick here. Take a right turn. And Lumberjacks Ooh. are going to down it shy of the goal line. Yes, at the two. That's a 53-yard punt. Now the sophomore from Rowlett and Nick Bruno. There's a flag down at the 40-yard line. Completely away from the play. So you, good you, job there by Bruno, though, getting the ball down inside the 10-yard the line and... If UCA does have this deep in their own territory, of course, you would think they would take a knee or at least just try a safe run. There is no big foul for illegal substitution. The player running off was the 11th player. All yeah. right, so perhaps illegal substitution, but waved off. And so UCA will have it at their own two. And I assume Clint Cox is going to be satisfied here with a 21 to 10 lead. Let's see what Ryan Howard and the UCA offense will do. Both of these teams one and one in the Southland Conference. It's just a huge game here. And UCA has looked rather smooth, Shea, considering all the injuries they have had to go through, especially on offense. At the two. And whistles blow before the snap. Was a timeout called? Yes, Central Arkansas has used their last timeout. Third and final charge timeout ahead. Well, Malcolm Maddox was in the backfield where Ryan Howard was going back to hand the ball off. But, I mean, it, it's happening two or three yards deep in, in your own end zone. You want to make sure you get that ball out past the goal line. There's Clint Conk, 102 victories as head coach of UCA, winning as coach in UCA history, a program that dates back to 1908. No, Shea, only two coaches in Arkansas collegiate history have won 100 games or more. And the other, of course, being Frank Broyles, 144 wins at the University of Arkansas in 19 seasons. Clint Conk, 102 wins and counting. And this is 14th year at UCA. But, and, and you will recall on the conference call with him earlier this week how glowingly he talked about Conway mm -hmm. and the campus and the experience that young men get when they come to this school, to this campus, to play for him and play for the Bears and for this university. He, he couldn't have been, he couldn't have sounded more proud of the position that he has and the role that he's in. And as proud of this team as he's ever been, he 
called the win last week against Lamar a great program win, maybe one of the best he's been around just because of the adversity that they faced going into that game and during that game and able to find a way to win in Beaumont and through the game's first 30 minutes here in Conway finding a way to hold off this powerful SFA offense. Remember, the Lumberjacks' only touchdown is on a trick play. And so conventionally, the Lumberjack offense coming in averaging 39 a game just with three, 21-10, UCA. Let's go down to Aaron. Coach, all week you talked about pressure and Brady Attaway. Your defense has done just that. Your thoughts on their performance so far? Yeah, it's just dangerous. The receivers are doing a nice job coming back to the ball. We're trying to mix our coverages up, but uh, they're, they're just so dangerous. Uh, they can they can get an awful lot of real estate in a very short period of time. All right, thanks so much. You bet. Guys. Thank you, Aaron. 21-10, Clint Cox, UCA Bears, ahead of the SFA Lumberjacks. Coming up, the Mid-South Bank Halftime Report. Megan Clemente's in studio with the latest from around the Southland. The Bears on the purple and gray stripes looking to protect their home turf during homecoming. Looking good so far. Every season starts with the same goal. It's the goal of every team. It's the reason each week they give everything they've got. Each team strives to make their dream a reality. The dream become the very best in college football. But only one team will earn the ultimate title. NCAA National Champions. What a great atmosphere. Experience it live. The 2014 NCAA Division I football championship game. Game day begins outside the stadium at Tailgate Town, a free event where college football fans and families get in on all the action. Test your skills, meet the stars of the game, and enjoy the pregame party as the anticipation to kick off builds. From the moment the players arrive at the stadium to the post-game championship award ceremony. Thank you to the best fans in America! You can be part of history cheering on the nation's best. The 2014 NCAA Division I football championship game. Saturday, January 4th at FC Dallas Stadium in Frisco, Texas. Affordable tickets available. Go online at NCAA.com slash FCS and reserve your seats today. Make a date with champions and experience it live. At Mid-South Bank, we're dedicated to providing loans that allow our customers to achieve their business and personal dreams. That's one promise you can bank on. We're not just business associates, we're neighbors. We're committed to our customers and the strength of our local economy. Here at Mid-South Bank, responsibility matters. With over 61 locations and still growing in Louisiana and Texas, discover how our customers are finding strength in numbers at Mid-South Bank. This is the Mid-South Bank Halftime Report on the Southland Conference Television Network. We've reached the breaking Conway between Stephen F. Austin and Central Arkansas. We'll get you back to UCA for more from David, Shea, and Aaron in a few minutes. Hey everyone, I'm Megan Clementi and welcome to the Southland Digital Network Studios. Most of this week's football action is already underway, but there's one matchup later tonight in Hammond. Speaking of big games, in soccer there was a showdown for the league lead, and in volleyball one team still stands tall in the conference standings. Southeastern Louisiana is unbeaten in conference play and looks to stay that way at home versus Lamar. The Lions are riding a four-game winning streak, their longest in 30 years. They'll also be looking to show poll voters they deserve to be ranked in the top 25 in the country. Lamar has been playing hard but coming up just short the last couple of weeks versus really good programs. 
The Cardinals are still trying to earn that first conference win. Kickoff is set for just after 7 p.m. at Strawberry Stadium in Hammond. Part of the Southland's primetime package on ESPN3. In soccer, it was a showdown of the conference's top two teams last week as Stephen F. Austin played at Southeastern Louisiana. Not only was first place on the line, but the inside track at the conference tournament's top seed. Both squads entered the game with identical 7-1 records, 12-2 and 1 overall. Megan Waziak scored in the 35th minute and SFA took a 1-0 halftime lead. SLU was pushing to tie the match late, but instead Zuri Prince scored in the 87th minute and the Lady Jacks come away with a 2-0 victory. It's their 7th consecutive shutout victory. Then on Saturday, they beat Nichols 4-1 for their 8th straight win as they continue to add to their best start in program history. Oral Roberts won a pair of matches to stay tied for second with SLU for the runner-up spot in the conference. But the Eagles were extended to double overtime before beating Sam Houston State. Jordan Parsons scored the golden goal for the 2-1 win. And Abilene Christian finished up its home schedule with a 3-1 win over UIW. The Wildcats are having a great season, earned just half a game out of second place at 7-3 in league play. But as part of the Wildcats' transition to Division I, they're not eligible to compete in the conference's tournament in two weeks in Lake Charles. The Sugar Bears of Central Arkansas continue to occupy the top spot in volleyball standings. And just to prove they deserve it, they had another perfect week. Just a game out, however, are Sam Houston State and Northwestern State ready to pounce should UCA stumble. The Sugar Bears hit the road and beat Mackney State and Nichols this past week. That makes 10 straight victories, and in that stretch, they've only lost two sets. The fight for tournament bids continues behind UCA. The top eight in the conference will make the field that starts in Corpus Christi in just less than a month. The top five look to be set, but after that, it's a scramble for the final burst. Four schools, Lamar, Houston Baptist, Mackney, and SFA will battle to fill the final three spots. For the third time this season, Houston Baptist's Matt Carey is the Men's Cross Country Athlete of the Week. He finished fifth in the Indiana State Pre-Nationals Meet. It's the second weekly honor for Nichols runner Tessney Carruthers. She won the Choctaw Open at Mississippi College. The Southland Cross Country Championships are next Friday in Lake Charles. This is the last weekend in October and time is running out for the squads that need to make a championship push. So as the weather cools off, the race gets hotter. I'm Megan Clemente. Thanks for joining me on the Mid-South Bank Halftime Report. Next up, we'll head back to Conway and get you ready for the final two quarters. Stay tuned for more of the Lumberjacks and Bears on over 25 affiliates across the Southland Conference Television Network. Think of the NCAA as a spirit squad, cheering for student athletes at every big event and every small one. We'd be there in the classroom at graduation, at their first job interview. Okay, so don't think of us as a spirit squad. Think of us as a mascot. Well, just know we're always there for student athletes. Conference game of the week. It is halftime. This is the Mid South Bank halftime report. 
I'm Erin Colefield. I am joined now by the athletic director here at Central Arkansas, Dr. Brad Teague. Today caps off a week long of homecoming festivities. Share with me some of the highlights from the week. Erin, you know, homecoming on any campus is, is a great week. And certainly at UCA, we love to do it, do it well and do it right. And it started on Monday with a pep rally at our senior citizens home all the way through today with our football game. And right behind us right now, they're doing the homecoming court. So it's always a great time. Share with me, I know today there were several different sporting events going on, including a volleyball match, and your team right now is red hot, having their unbeaten on the year. You know what, Aaron? We've had several weekends this year. We've had multiple events going on, and that's always a great time on our campus. It brings a lot of our community out to our campus. But, yes, volleyball has been very good for many years, and certainly this year is no different. As we're undefeated in conference, we've only got three losses overall. We've beaten Kansas, who was nationally ranked in the top ten earlier in the year. So it's been a great year, and we expect them to continue to do well. All right, and I know they won three to one today. Now, part of being a student athlete is also focusing on the academics, and the NCAA recently released their new graduation rates. What did you see in Central Arkansas scores? You know, Aaron, what's great about our Division One move, and we've been a Division One institution now and playing in the NCAA for over eight years, but the best part about going Division One was in academics. And our student athletes and our coaches and our academic advisors have really done well. And when the when the graduation rates were released, we were number one in our conference of all the football playing institutions, which there are 11, but we were number two overall. So we're very proud of that. And then certainly this year we, we were able to – reach our goal of a 3.0 GPA and cumulative GPA this year, 3.02 for all of our 400 student athletes. So very proud of their work. And I know the APR is released in the spring, but that's another area where Central Arkansas has excelled over the past few years. Yeah, the APR is, is a big topic in Division One. It's the academic progress rate. And our football program, in the three years we've been eligible for this award, have, have won the top APR award in our conference. So, yeah, we're very proud of what they're doing. Now, the field here is very unique, as we've seen, with the purple and gray stripes. Something else that's very neat here is the suites that are actually on the, the behind the student section up top. Those are new from last year, but just share with me that project. You know, we, we were able to open up 12 luxury suites last year. They hold 20 people. There's outdoor seating, indoor seating, and all the amenities that anybody would want. That's been a, a great thing for us, and it's really like a Conway, Little Rock block party. The, the, everyone leaves the doors open. They're up and down, talking to each other and having a big time, so it's a lot of fun to provide that for them. To see the community and all the people that really come out here on homecoming weekend, how great is that? Oh, it's perfect. It's beautiful. You know, there's three colleges in Conway, Arkansas. Conway's a wonderful city of 65,000. It's only expanding and growing, and our town-gown relationship is superb. We've got 12,000 students. Uh, we love being in Conway. I know you've been here. This is your seventh year. Coach has been here. This is his 14th year. Tell me just about, you know, what Coach brings to the program and what it's like to have someone like that leading your team. You know, he's been, uh, like you said, 14 years. So that's half his time in Division Two, half his time in Division One, And he's become a better coach uh, as he's been here uh, that long and, and a better coach in Division One than he was in Division Two. His stability, his understanding of academics and discipline uh, of the team concept really makes us a good program. I'm so proud of Coach Conk. All right, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks, Aaron. All right, well, earlier in, during this halftime, the marching band, the Bears marching band, did their ha homecoming show. Let's take a look. It's 21-10 Bears over the Lumberjacks on the South Conference Game of the Week. We'll be right back with more on the Midland South Bank Halftime Report.
Read to a child today and spark a lifetime of ambition. But it would be safe to keep your distance until the oh, secret does make you smile. Why the sources say that chicken soup has proved has found their way out of this. Getting closer to nature can get you closer to your family. Go to discovertheforest.org. It's it's 2110 at Central Arkansas over Stephen F. Austin at halftime. This is the Mid-South Bank Halftime Report. I'm Aaron Cofield. I am joined now by the parents of UCA quarterback Ryan Howard. This is Mike and Daria. They have made it to every game over the past three years, no matter where it is. So I've got to know just who is the one that does the bulk of the driving? Uh, my husband. He, he's, he's a driver's education teacher, actually. So it kind of comes naturally and, and he just, and it's good that he does that. So yeah, and I help some too. How great has it been this season now with Ryan making a second start to be coming to the game and seeing Ryan starting? Uh, it's it's just a blessing, you know. I mean, we certainly, um, I don't know, you know, we hurt for for Winrick and his family because he's a precious young man and great kid, and and we just pray for him daily to heal. But um, you know, Ryan's gonna do what he needs to do to help his team. Well, Mike, we also call him Coach. He is a coach in Alabama. He's an assistant coach. He was Ryan's assistant coach. So when you watch Ryan out here on the field, just what do you see, and maybe how has his game really improved over the past few years? Uh, he just works hard on and off the field and uh, works on his throwing and uh, uh, has a, always has a high completion rate usually and um, uh, just loves playing the game. He just grew up in a coach's house and he's seen me coach all these years and he just he just fell right into it. Of course, when he finishes, he's probably going to be a coach also. So he just loves playing and being a leader on the field. Well, how long is the ride for you all from home to come to the home games here in Conway? It's uh, six hours. We usually leave on a Saturday morning around 5 and then leave on Sunday morning around 7. So I have to get back in the afternoons for my game, so we have to get back early. So uh, it's a pretty quick trip, but we enjoy it every time we come. So football season, the Howard household is a very, very busy one. How does it work with some of the, the games that are, you know, maybe 9, 10 hours away? How do we decide if we're going to fly or if we're going to drive or just what, what determines that? Uh, well, Mike doesn't like to fly, period, so we pretty much drive everywhere. And my family actually lives in New York State, so we've, we've done it our whole lives with our kids. And so this really, nine hours is not bad compared to 20. But um, we flew to Colorado this year, and he went to Montana the year they were in the playoffs. So. What has been, I guess, the most exciting trip or just an away stadium that you, you guys have really enjoyed? I think Montana. It was an interesting uh, community, and they supported their team real well, and our guys played really good, and it was uh, really cold that day, and I think it's a great experience for all our players and all the parents and all that went. It was, it was a fun trip. All right. Well, thank you guys so much. All right. For highlights and stats from the first half, let's go up to the booth with David and Shay. All right. Thank you so much, Aaron. What, what dedicated, proud parents to their young boy and Ryan Howard. Halftime stats and trickeration from SFA to give them their touchdown. Well, Tyler Boyd to DJ Ward. That is the second touchdown pass of the season for Tyler Boyd. But how about the game and the half, excuse me, by Ryan Howard. Courtney Whitehead comes up with a circus catch there. Taylor Reed does a great job after a turnover and gets the ball into the end zone on a two-play drive. But then again, Ryan Howard back to that passing game, and he is finding and locating single coverage. Desmond Lewis had a couple of huge catches. That one for a touchdown there. And again, this Bears offense seemingly on track. And just an interesting stat. You look at the numbers here. There's 537 yards of total offense. Only 40 of those have been on the ground. 
If you're SFA, quite frankly, you have 306 yards. You've had 13 third downs in the time of possession favoring them. Just 10 points. What have the Bears done to be able to have that bend but not break mentality be one of success? Well, something that you've talked about in the first half, David, for SFA, where they've shot themselves in the foot is in the penalty department. You can see nine of them there. Nine penalties and a half. And you, there's no way you can get continuity offensively when you continue to have first and 15, first and 20, or you get a second and, you know, you, you, you get a good positive play and then you get a penalty. It just it just takes all the momentum away from you. And this SFA offense is a momentum offense. It's interesting. Clint Conk told us a couple of days ago when we talked to him that you have to stop the run first. An SFA offense that's very good doing both stop the run first. And no doubt you look at the stat sheet and they've done just that. Well, he, he said you have to take something away. And, and the run is kind of where you want to play it. And for the, for the Bears defense, David, they have been so fit physical at the point of attack. Marquise Gaines has had a heck of a first half. We've not called his name a whole lot, but the, that defensive front has just been awesome. Uh, Hornbuckle in there, TJ Randall, and Justin Hurd finally back, and you've got some continuity in, in play going in that linebacker spot. So front seven for the Bears doing a great job of kind of limiting. No one's going to stop this Lumberjack offense. It's can you limit them and can you make them work for the yardage? And so far, the Bears have been successful. So far, so good at 21-10 UCA lead. Let's look at other games. A busy slate across the Southland Conference. A couple of games going on in San Houston State. I think they played angry after yeah. McNeese knocked them off in Lake Charles one week ago. The Demons of Northwestern State fall to the Bearcats 44 to 10. And Nick Neese, that's impressive against the Nichols team you saw against SFA last week, Shay, and we're very impressed with. No hangover for the Cowboys following their win over Sam one week ago. They are all over Nichols 41 to 17. Tonight, a couple of the newest members of the Southland Conference do battle in San Antonio, Incarnate Word hosting Houston Baptist. Abilene Christian taking on winless New Mexico State in Las Cruces. And Lincoln Rose with a call in ESPN 3, Lamar taking on the Lions of Southeastern Louisiana in Hammond. UCA 21 and Stephen of Austin 10, our halftime score. FCS Sports Network coaches poll. You saw McNeese and Sam Houston State ranked in the top 10 and Central Arkansas playing like a nationally ranked team today despite all their losses due to injury. You see Shea ranked number 23 and Southeastern Louisiana now deservedly getting some votes. Absolutely. The Lions get it. Ron Roberts doing a great job there. Second year. Xavier Robinson having a huge year down at Southeastern and Strawberry Stadium is rocking. Let's go down to Aaron Cofield. Trailing at the half, what did you tell your team? I tell you, I was really proud of their effort. I thought uh, we withstood um, a really good, explosive offense uh, by Central Arkansas. And I thought we battled back and uh, offensively did some pretty good things as well. So I thought we play, played pretty well. All right, thanks so much. Guys? J.C. Harper's Lumberjacks trailing UCA 21-10 to 10 at halftime. The second half coming up when we return to the Purple and Gray Stripes. Lumberjack experience at SFA. A quality education. Personalized. We work hard. And take it easy. Small classes. We know our professors. And they care. Beautiful campus. Not too big and not too small. Close to home, but not too close. Majors you want. Some only offered here. Winning sports. Oh yeah. Discover the Lumberjack experience. At the University of Central Arkansas, I've encountered world-changing academics and game-changing athletics. Helping me become a regular on the Southland Conference Honor Roll, I was able to graduate early with a business degree, and now I'm seeking a second degree in physical education, all while playing Division I volleyball, softball, and soccer. UCA put me and my education front and center. Learn how at uca.edu. The game of the week on the Southland Conference Television Network. Brought to you by Mid-South Bank, the official bank of the Southland Conference. It's time to love your bank. 
by State Farm. Visit texas.statefarm.com for your chance to win the ultimate VIP experience and let State Farm help you get to a better state. And by Justin's, the official championship ring provider of the Southland Conference. Justin's, the ring of champions. The Bears having a lot of fun on a homecoming. They're 12 and 1 in homecoming games under their head coach, Clint Conk. Well, log on to FCSinsider.com, a wonderful site, the new home for NCAA Division I FCS football. Scores, stats, rankings, highlights, and much, much more. Every down, every day, it's FCSinsider.com. Alongside Shea Walker, I'm David Salzman with Aaron Cofield down on the sidelines. I really like this field. It's the first time I've been here. I didn't know what I would think of seeing a game for 60 full minutes on the purple and gray stripes, but I like it a lot. Sporting News calling it the coolest field in college football, and uh, well, I have to agree with them. It is certainly up there as the Bears will be receiving this second-half kickoff. Well, when you have big offensive plays and good defensive plays as we've had in the first half of this game, David, it kind of makes the field uh, even that much more <laughs> enjoyable. UCA won the opening toss, defer the option to the second half, so they get the advantage of getting the ball first. Here in the third quarter, Wilson, a couple of nice returns so far today. Add this to his resume. A couple of men to beat, and he's going to, to the end zone. What a start to the second half for the Bears. 85 yards. And John Tavius Wilson. Freshman wide receiver, 5'9", 171 pounds, and he was very close in the first half, David, to breaking one. Fields this one around the 10, 11-yard line. Love the vision, and then just the burst of speed as he outruns the pursuit and cruises on into the end zone. What an impressive start to the half for the Bears. There are just some great athletes on both sides of the field, and that young man, Jatavius Wilson, Giving the Bears a 17-point edge. Eddie Camara, 4 of 4 on PATs. A disastrous start for the Lumberjacks. But their offense so prolific, and they're going to have to, obviously, put some points on the board in a hurry now. As they're down 18, you see the stats for Wilson. Two returns, including that touchdown. Let's go down to Aaron. Well, guys, I am with the newly named homecoming queen here at Central Arkansas, Jenna Henson. Jenna, how excited were you just now when they announced your name? I was extremely excited. Um, I was not expecting that at all. This is a huge honor, and I'm so proud to represent the University of Central Arkansas. All right, thanks so much. Congratulations. Thank you. Guys. Thank you very much, Ariel. That is a big moment. You bet. A lot of pageantry here at halftime mm -hmm. in Conway for homecoming week. We saw... Past homecoming queens, crowned a new one. It's been a busy day here for the staff at Central Arkansas. And the Bears now with a 28 to 10 lead. Now, one thing J.C. Harper told us earlier this week is in the big loss at Southeastern Louisiana, 56-14. Once Southeastern really got going, he saw his team lose a bit of rhythm. Has to be a concern now as all of a sudden you come out of the locker room fired up and just like that, you give up a touchdown on special teams. Yeah, it's certainly the momentum shift is gone toward the Bears, but you know, you've got Joshua West back for the Lumberjacks, and he is a home run hitter, and he'll have a chance to return this one. True freshman from Angleton. Most special player, J.C. Harper's been around at SFA, and he gets just past the 25-yard line. Not just because of this deficit 28-10, but you think so important for the Lumberjacks just to get some points on the board, even if it's a field goal, getting some type of momentum back. And you're right, David. And one of the things to think about, we've not talked about this much, but Gus Johnson, the starting running back, who was the leading rusher, leading touchdown uh, guy from the in the backfield for the Lumberjacks, out of this game with a high ankle sprain. We talked about it a little bit, but it's, he's not been available, and that has, I think that's, made it a, just a little bit more tougher against a very rugged defense 
And you see again that defense stepping up. T.J. Randall, the front floor for this Bears defense has just been outstanding all game. Joshua West had 175 yards on 14 carries last week against Nichols. No gain there. He's had 11 carries for 13 yards in this game. Yeah, the, the Bears defense, again, extremely stingy. And we talked about it, 40 yards of rushing between these two teams and over 500 yards of offense. Look out on the corner. Blitz Attaway gets away. And deep down the field, nice sliding catch grab. made. Is it going to count? I yes. believe so. It is. Aaron Thomas hauling that ball in. And what a job by Attaway to get it to him. Uh, Attaway does a great job of eluding the corner blitz. And he, as he outpaces it. And that's what you cannot do as a defender. You cannot let the quarterback break contain. Aaron Thomas goes down. He's got right, the best hands on this team. Makes a great grab. Gain of 28. Thomas came in averaging almost 18 yards a catch. As to that total. Big run. Keith Lawson up into just shy of the UCA 40. Ooh. Bobby Watkins coming up at the safety spot. Looked like Lawson had a lot more running room. I was going to say green, but doesn't work on this field. Close, close. Yeah, no, but that was a great tackle there by Bobby Watkins, open field. Two good plays in a row by the Lumberjacks. Looking for three. Here's Mosley past the 35. That's enough for a first down, a gain of eight. What an easy rhythm. You see the pace of this offense, and I know that you've seen it before, but right now the Lumberjacks coming out first drive, knowing that they've got to score touchdowns now. Field goal's not going to get it done. They've got to get the ball in the end zone, but so far on this drive, executing it fairly well. Lawson a tailback, the play action, and the dump off for the first time. Had a lot of running room into the red zone goes Chase Curry, the big sophomore from Corpus Christi, Texas. Well, you don't talk about tight ends very much in this offense, but Curry kind of lines up in that eight spot where it's just right behind, just off the, the, the left flank of the left tackle. Goes out to the flat seam, does a great job of protecting the ball, anticipating the hit, picks up another first down. Gain of 16. Now Boyd gets a shot, slipping the first tackle, and another past the 10. Well, I tell you what, that's just an outstanding effort there by Tyler Boyd, fighting through it. And, he, you know, he doesn't look like he's the biggest of guys, most dominant, imposing. I tell you, he's awfully strong. He runs through two arm tackles. Two guys had a chance to bring him down, and he picks up eight yards. And the Lumberjacks finish this off. 65 yards on the drive so far. Attaway to throw, looking for his first touchdown pass, and that is short for Boyd. A big third and two coming for the Lumberjacks. Lumberjacks had 13 third downs in the first half. This would be a key conversion on third and two. They need to get it. To just shy of the six. Well, definitely two down territory from what we've seen of them so far in this game. Pass the five. Mosley has the first down, and it'll be first and goal. And the junior from Tyler, Texas, 13 catches coming in, and a couple of big ones on this drive. Central Arkansas's defense very good in the red zone this season. Just giving up touchdowns on half of opponents' drives. Looking to stop SFA here, they won't. A beautiful strike to Tyler Boyd. Six huge points for the Lumberjacks to get right back in it. But David, I like the way the Lumberjack offense, J.C. Harper, brings in the tight end to make it look like they were going to try to power run the ball. Chase Curry checked back in, lined up in the backfield. You see that fake play right there, and then again, just throws a dart into Tyler Boyd for the score. Boyd with a touchdown pass in the second quarter. And right there, his second touchdown catch of the season. Extra point by Jordan Waves. And again, did SFA need that? After the kick return for a score by UCA to begin the half, Tyler Boyd and the Lumberjacks right back in it on the purple and gray stripes. Hey, look at Mommy. Maybe the light hurts his eyes. Maybe she's just not hungry. Ooh. Maybe it's a phase. Avoiding eye contact is one early sign of autism. Learn the others today.
When some people struggle with their mortgage payments, they become frozen, petrified, not knowing what to do, they do nothing. But the people who do something, the people who take action, are far more likely to get the most positive outcome. Making Home Affordable is a free government program. Call now to talk one-on-one -on -one with a housing expert about the options that are right for you. Real help, real answers, right now. Maybe he's really focused. Maybe he likes spinning the wheels. Maybe he just loves trucks. Preoccupation with objects is one early sign of autism. Learn the others today. Team, an SF-18 scoring 39 points a game coming in, second in the nation. Shea and yard per game and passing offense. Guess you can say a, a matter of time before they got things going. What a huge drive for them, their first offensive drive of the second half. Well, and they certainly needed it on that one, David, because Jatavius Wilson had returned that previous kick for a touchdown, and he might be, well, not he, but <laughs> Winfrey. the Bears may be gone. Dylan Winfrey, my goodness. A huge burst of speed, a 28-yard return in good starting field position for the Bears here in the early third. Yeah, Lumberjacks, again, nine plays, 73-yard drive to answer the touchdown, so just kind of hanging pace from where you were with halftime, but... You heard Coach J.C. Harper tell Aaron as he was going in, uh, excuse me, Clint Conk telling Aaron that this SFA offense can chew up yardage in big chunks, and you saw it on that last drive. Ryan Howard, a quarterback for UCA, solid first half, 12 of 18, 213 yards, two touchdowns, one interception, and miscommunication there Ooh. with Wilson. Trey Valier had an opportunity there to make an interception just beyond his reach, but as he picks it, if he was able to come up with that, David, he would have walked into the end zone. You've Dangerous some, throw by the young quarterback. You've right seen now. some wild games here in Conway, Shay. For Southland TV, the loss to McNeese earlier this season. A tremendous come from behind win against Sam Houston last year. Do we have some wildness coming up? Desmond Smith has been a key contributor today. Gains about seven on that throw. Yeah, one thing that is a little bit different for this Bear offense, obviously with Chase Dixon, the injury of being out, but we've not seen Thomas Hart or Joe Carmichael, the two tight ends. We've not really seen them involved with the offense. Yeah, Chase Dixon broke his right leg last week against Lamar out for the year, his career over. Six touchdowns this year, 10 for his UCA career. Another catch by Smith, a first down and more. Good speed getting past the SFA 35. That gains 21. I'm really impressed with Ryan Howard again. You had mentioned this earlier. He got his start last week against Lamar. Had to conduct a 12-play, 75-yard go-ahead score late in the fourth quarter to win that game. And I tell you, today he has thrown, he's lit up this Lumberjack defense, but his poise in the pocket. Now, Very good. Now Taylor Reed in, and he'll go deep as the defender slips, and a juggling catch made by Lewis. And UCA answers. Can you say, wow? Desmond Lewis, that was a heck of a catch. Brian Howard, he's been throwing a little, the ball with a little bit more air underneath it, and you see he did not throw that one with as much air, but Lewis gets the right hand on it, flips it back to him, never breaks stride, and how about the day for Desmond Lewis? How about that? Six catches, 160 yards, and two touchdowns. Oh, we need to check that. That was Taylor Reed on the throw. Camara. His fifth yeah. extra point today, 35-17. In the second quarter, we had three touchdowns in a 90-second span. It's been three and a half minutes in the third. Still three scores, including this one. Yeah, well, let me take back and, and give Taylor Reed all the credit in the world because he is not, I, to my knowledge, I don't think he's thrown a pass today. That was his first pass attempt, and he did. He laid it out there where it was soft enough, but it just was a little bit harder than we had seen Desmond Lewis have to try to make a catch, but... Taylor Reed, 6'3", 215-pound sophomore. Put it out there. And how about that? You know, offensive explosion, man. I don't know. That, should we set an over and under on the points in this game? <laughs> I wonder what it would have been coming in. That's three quick scores, though. We barely got time run off in the third quarter. You saw the drive, four plays, 62 yards. Taylor Reed, a second touchdown pass of the season. And Desmond Lewis has a touchdown catch today, one from Reed and one from Ryan Howard. 
Taylor Reed saying, you know, he almost dropped that. <laughs> but great concentration by Lewis, the junior from Mesquite in the Dallas area to haul it in. Every SFA game has been wild. They've either scored 50 plus or they've given up over 50 plus in every game this year. Still plenty of time for them to make a comeback with Brady Attaway and the Lumberjack offense. Camara approaches the ball at the 35, kicks it away. And Joshua West, three yards deep, takes a knee. Well, Eddie Camara gets some exercise today. <laughs> Still hitting the ball and getting it deep, which is, uh, is a great trait to see. You see Brady Attaway, he is a leader, and J.C. Harper just says he's always been a leader, but every year just kind of adds to his leadership qualities. And, and you saw there coming out of the huddle in front of the SFA sideline, he didn't jog. I mean, he was running out ahead of his team. He knows how much time is left, and you know that the senior from White House, Texas, isn't going to panic. Look at those numbers already for Brady Attaway with 11.27 to go in the third. 31 of 44, 274. Throw number 45. That's a nice grab by Ward extending his arms and gaining eight. Well, I, I tell you, I'm just really impressed with the arm strength. When Brady Attaway gets out on top of the ball, David, he he, he spins it really, really well. And, and DJ Ward comes up with a great catch. But that ball travels probably close to 30 yards. Pick, picks up a big throw, big arm. This may be their biggest run of the day. Fred Ford, a first down and more. Down just shy of SFA's on 45. That's a gain of 10. It is their longest run of the afternoon for the sophomore from Kirbyville, Texas. That away, faking the handoff to Ford. Short gain on this catch. Stephen Cunnigan gets his first grab. Junior from Wills Point, Texas. No huddle, hurry it up. That's what SFA loves to do. They had 53 plays in the first half. Came in averaging 90 a game, and J.C. Harper says he wants that total in between 90 and 100. They are on that pace. Braxton Beard gets a try, slipping the first tackle. And he is just shy of the first, may actually have it. Well, Beard doing a good job of securing the ball and fighting, trying to pick up that first down. It's third and less than half a yard. Should, should be just your regular passing play, right? Third and less than half. <laughs> well, they have options, especially if J.C. Harper feels that it's four down territory. Well, Fred Ford in the backfield, and again, he is probably the more physical back, if you will, out of the guys that have rotated through on the Lumberjack side. Can Ford get it? Getting through the line, and he has the first easily past the 45. So you have your bruising back, Fred Ford, pick up the first down. Joshua West checks back in. Good job of that offensive front, creating a seam. And see big number 74, Andrew Ratliff there, 6'5", 307 pounds, leaning. When you lean 307 pounds, it's easy to pick up a yard. Matt Hornbuckle finally made the stop. A mix of young and experienced on that SFA offensive line. A bullet to Boyd. Lost his feet, but still got the first again at 12. Well, Brady Attaway, when he wants to, David, do you see how quickly he gets rid of the ball? And it's like a precision trigger. It goes off, and uh, Boyd comes up with the first down play. He's 35 of 48 passing. Now West gets a shot past the 30. Tyrell Wellmaker coming up. I tell you what, it, you know, for a guy like Joshua, who had such a big game last week when he came on to spell Gus Johnson, had an 88-yard touchdown run against Nichols, and as you said earlier, put up over, well over 100 yards. But it's been tough sledding for the young man so far in this game, and this, this UCA defense playing very tough and making sure that he's not breaking the long run so far. Boyd, the man in motion. Attaway will feed him with a burst of speed as he makes the grab. He is slung down by Marvin Mitchell. And maybe enough for the first, depending on the mark. Right, Marvin Mitchell's coming off. He's hobbled. So there is a little bit of substitution here, but trying to get Marvin Mitchell off the field before the play clock, or before the play starts, and you know how Brady Attaway likes to go, but 
Mitchell able to get off. He does get off third down and one. Another third down for the Lumberjacks this afternoon. Great diving grab, Thomas. Able to beat Peters and now SFA in the red zone. Well, I tell you what, Aaron Thomas has incredibly good hands. And I don't really want to minimize what he does by calling him a possession receiver, but he is so, so good at catching the ball. West able to scoot his way around the edge to the outside, and that's a nice gain of about six for the freshman. 20. But Lumberjack offense on a little bit of a roll here, getting some momentum behind him. They got big chunks on first down. Give him seven, actually. Second down and three. And the way this game is going, SFA needing to answer. So many second half drives with touchdowns. They're getting close. Going to the end zone, and Boyd, he's there for the score. Second touchdown, Attaway to Boyd this quarter. 35 23, the score. Well, Tyler Boyd showing you why he is such a valuable receiver on this team. Darius Reed, he's going to turn Darius Reed around. He put a little bit of a fake inside. He breaks it back out to the corner. And at, and at a way, David was not throwing the ball to Boyd. He was throwing the ball to space. He knew that he was going to make that little post-corner move. Post-move was perfectly Darius Reed. Bit on it. Tyler Boyd breaks it out to the corner, and the ball's waiting for him. Already 10 catches for Boyd. D.J. Ward has eight catches for 140 yards. We have 7.45 to go in the third. The Lumberjacks still with work to do, but they answer another UCA score. 35-24 in Conway. At Mid-South Bank, we're dedicated to providing loans that allow our customers to achieve their business and personal dreams. That's one promise you can bank on. We're not just business associates, we're neighbors. We're committed to our customers and the strength of our local economy. Here at Mid-South Bank, responsibility matters. With over 61 locations and still growing in Louisiana and Texas, discover how our customers are finding strength in numbers at Mid-South Bank. In the NCAA Division I Football Championship Subdivision, the game is played with perseverance, integrity, passion, character, and sportsmanship as he works to honor the game and respect his teammates, opponents, officials, and fans. Every FCS player grows in his responsibilities as a student athlete and as a member of his campus and community. The NCAA Division I Football Championship Subdivision, every down, every day. Every down, every day, every team strives to make their dream a reality. The dream, NCAA National Champion. And let the party begin. Experience it live at the 2014 NCAA Division I Football Championship Game, Saturday, January 4th at FC Dallas Stadium in Frisco, Texas. Affordable tickets available. Visit NCAA.com slash FCS to reserve your seats today. Now we have the game that I think we expected, Shay. 21-10 at the half. Lower scoring than we thought, but both teams, 14 points in the third. Still 7.45 to go. What do you think about that? 31 points scored in the first 30 minutes. 28 points scored in 7 minutes and 55 seconds. So every possession that we've seen so far in the second half has been a touchdown. It started with a kick return for a score by Jatavius Wilson. Following that, Dylan Winfrey put UCA in good field position. Wilson's going to get a chance here. Look out. Here he goes again. A stiff arm on the kicker, Wiggs. And Wiggs, though, holds on tight and prevents an even bigger return. Still a 27-yard return. But UCA will have it at their own 36. You see Jordan Wiggs saying, no, I'm not going to let you return this one for another huge game. Modest. It's a modest game. <laughs> Good job there by Jordan Wiggs, so coming up with an open field tackle and a very explosive Jatavius Wilson. Well, the question here, of course, if you're SFA, can your defense get a stop? They're giving up 45 points a game coming in. The fewest allowed to an FCS opponent, 38, and that was in their big win over Montana State, who's ranked number five in the nation. Willie Matthews hammered down to the turf. A huge stop by Darren Robinson. Well, then Robinson has had a really good game defensively, and we, since then we kind of keep going back to the front fours for both of these teams, but 
taking the run away is what both seem to be doing and we, we kind of witnessed that by the yardage gained in the first half but Nice play right there, second and ten. Robinson, first team all-conference last season. Great 2013 so far, junior from Dallas. Here comes the pressure. And Howard heaving it deep. And the receiver cut his route off. And now SFA is forced third and ten. Well, that, I, I tell you, from a halftime adjustment, we've not seen a lot of offensive plays by Central Arkansas so far in this third quarter. But I can tell you what, Coach Harper at SFA, you just know that he made some adjustments because there were three defenders around the two receivers downfield so nothing doing there and then he also had pressure right in ryan howard's face as he was looking to get rid of the ball there'll be trips bunched up to the left of howard alec willis the sophomore center ready to deliver this football to howard on third and ten would be a huge stop for the lumberjacks no blitz here Stepping up, Howard with time, heaving it deep, has a man open, a catch made, and he's going to score. Jose Moore, his red shirt taken off just last week, and he gets the big touchdown for the Bears. And everyone's saying, who? Jose Moore, you bet. And what a throw by Ryan Howard. I'm going to get it right this time. You know, Taylor Reed, beautifully done on the last play, but Ryan Howard stepping up in the patience that he got from that offensive line, allowing him to let Jose Moore get behind the coverage, and he delivers the ball, does Ryan Howard beautifully in stride. That was an easy pitching catch for the touchdown. One catch, five yards last week. Huge touchdown there, 42-24 Bears. Let's go down to Aaron. Guys, I'm with my buddy Bruce, who's a little bit upset. Because, Bruce, do you know what place you're in in the mascot challenge? Oh, you're in third. Do you know what place the Lumberjack is in? He's currently in first place. <laughs> so show us what we got. Why do fans need to go online and vote for you for the State Farm Mascot Challenge? You just go to the Southland Conference Facebook page, and you can get on. You can see all of the current standings, and you can vote for Bruce here, who's trying to be sweet for the camera and solicit some votes. He's blowing you guys kisses, guys. I can see it. Hey, hey, mascot challenge, man. It, this was, it's always down to the wire. Last year, Lumberjack was in the lead, and Sammy came up late, Aaron, and was awarded the mascot challenge winner. Sammy the Bear out of Sam Houston. Does, does the Closed Lumber, late. Does the Lumberjack have an unfair advantage being a human mascot? You know, I think he does, and here's why. In the promo, you see him curling a cheerleader. Now, that's pretty cool. It's very cool. Yeah, and when you can curl a cheerleader, and you know, I, I think that you just have, there's a little bit more uh, connection. Are you saying that Bruce D. Bear needs to curl a cheerleader to get back in the race? Well, he's yeah. the third, but you know. But I, I think it's a start. It's a start. After that 64-yard pass on third and 10 for the score, SFA has to answer again. Joshua West brought down just past the 20. What a great job UCA special teams have done all afternoon. Really have. I mean, generally, you would expect that very sound fundamentally for the Bears under Clint Conk, and it's one of the hallmarks. I mean, this is a, a very well-coached team. A lot of emphasis on special teams. SFA two for two on their drives this half. Brady Attaway, two touchdown passes to Tyler Boyd. Well, David, looking down on the field, you see the two high safeties. So, again, this Bear defense content with keeping things in front of them. Going deep and challenging the defense, and that was almost intercepted. The pass was intended for Thomas. Marcus Peters was the man closest to the football. Attaway is now at 38 for 52 passing. You talk about having a strong arm. You've got to have a durable arm as well. Quarterback this Lumberjack team. It was last week. Washington State's quarterback went 55 of 89. Attaway, no, not on that pace. He's close. Going deep again. Good defensive play made as Mike Brooks was the intended receiver. That's Terrell Wellmaker, who was on coverage, and you see number 23, Dylan Winfrey also. Yeah, Winfrey doing a good job of really staying stride for stride with Brooks and not allowing him 
to, to see clearly to track the ball down. And Brady Atway had to put a little bit more air under that than he wanted to, and Dylan Winford just kind of kept his body and his head in front of the line of sight by Mike Brooks. SFA looking for four for four on thirds, and they want a flag, won't get one on that pass for Ward. Well, David, that play went right by the umpire. He had clear line of sight on that. I tell you what, on a replay, <laughs> it looked like there's a little bit of jersey there. But no call, and that's going to force the Lumberjacks to punt the ball, and the Bears should get relatively good field position. That is a break for UCA. You saw a clear angle of the grab of the jersey. Instead, Clay Murphy is back. You see this Nick Bruno punt. Murphy steps up. Fair catch, just shy of midfield. Only a 31-yard punt. We'll go to break. And homecoming. UCA looking to protect the purple and gray stripes and up 18. Are you sure we should take this billboard down? People find out State Farm does car loans as well as they do insurance. Our bank is through. Good point. Grab an edge. Look, there's two guys on the State Farm Borrow Better Banking sign. No, for real, there's two dudes on the State Farm Borrow Better Banking sign. Gentlemen, please get down from the State Farm Borrow Better Banking sign. Phil, get the hose. Okay, he's getting the hose. All right, let's go. Want to borrow better? Contact your local State Farm agent about a car loan that could save you hundreds. Four, 6-19 remaining in the third quarter. Taylor Reed will begin this drive at quarterback for UCA. A straight run on first down. A couple of blockers in front of him, and he is close to the first down marker, gain of about nine. Well, I like the vision there of Taylor Reed. David, his, he took that ball clearly. He was going to run it, but it looked like he tried to, or he had a decision. Is he going to run it more straight, or was he going to bounce it outside? He went to the short side of the field, stayed inside the sideline, picked up nine yards. Impressive all, run. All the information you want. They do a great job at the Southland Conference Digital Network, southland.org. The keeper again by Reed, and that is enough for the first down. Read a touchdown pass, the second of the season. Came earlier this quarter to Desmond Lewis. Two runs. Enough for the first, and now in comes Ryan Howard. Howard, 15 to 23, passing 305 yards, including the 64 yard strike to Jose Moore on the Bears' last drive. Blake Veasley, a sophomore from Cherry Valley, Arkansas, is in a tailback. Heaving it deep again. He wants Lewis, and that's too long. Why not? You can't blame him for going down there to try to find Desmond Lewis, who has had a monster day today. And challenging these young DBs, Eugene Wright, a true freshman from Rosenberg, Texas, in the Houston area, it was the one on coverage. Lewis coming in, leading the Bears in receiving yards, and he has had quite a day. 160 yards receiving for UCA so far and two touchdowns. Bringing the heat. Hammered is Howard as he gets it away. Still the catch made, and this is Damian Watts. Another touchdown for UCA. 41 yards. So going back against Eugene Wright, and there's a late, late flag. 
thrown by the line judge right there in the middle of the field. David around the 15, 16, 17 yard line. But tell you what, it looked like Lewis. Take that back. Ward has just had a little bit of a push off. And, and just at where the ball was coming over. Let's see. We only got any sportsman like. Unsportsmanlike conduct on UCA, but after the touchdown, touchdown stands. Go ahead, Shay. Well, UCA continues to test these DBs. Yeah, and, and Eugene Wright, young man, you said, as you just stated, the freshman out of Rosenberg, but I think it was an impressive play by Watts because he's going down the sideline, and, I, and it just used a little bit of the body, but these big receivers that have come up with huge plays time after time. And look, these aren't runs and catches. You know how you see like the bubble screen or the short pass play. Right. I mean, these are downfield vertical bombs. Right, great point. And the philosophy obviously is we may miss some, but we're gonna get enough to put up big scores. And Ryan Howard is up to 346 yards passing, four touchdowns. Extra point is through Jace Denker, sophomore from Bryant, Arkansas, with the PAT. Let's go down to Aaron. Well, guys, Damian Watts grew up in Texarkana. He played at Pleasant Grove High School. And when there, he played with Michael Waka, who is a pitcher for the St. Louis Cardinals. He played in that game to win the other night. Now, the two of them have been friends since the sixth grade. I'm told that Watts does not miss a Cardinals game, and they have been talking with each other as Waka goes on and has a major league career. He says it's hard to imagine. You know, they're just 22 years old, but to see his success here playing college football and the success of his buddy there in the professional baseball league. Thanks, Aaron. Well, what a great point. A great story. Michael Waka, former, well, that's right. You're not former Aggies, right? No, no, it you're, is you're former. Former Aggie. It's okay, always okay, former. okay. Not X. I, I just want, not X, but former. I just I wanted to get that right. Yeah, yeah, you, you did. You, and you, and you, you over did. 100 catches at AM yourself <laughs> in, in your career. And a great story, Waka. Just his, what, second year in the yeah. league and winning a World Series game. Boy, it was impressive. Uh, and, and really, he's just had a, I'll call it a magical ascent to get up to the big leagues. Mm -hmm. Didn't take him very long, and you know, just a year ago, he was playing at the collegiate level. But so he's had a he's had a heck of a ride for a 22-year-old. Wow. Then starting pitcher in the second game of the World Series is outstanding. Cardinals and Red Sox game three tonight at Bush Stadium. So after the penalty, this kickoff comes from the 20, and plenty of room for Joshua West to try to make something out of this. Boy, showing his elusiveness, slipping down just past the 40, but you can see a little taste of there, Shay. Well, again, J.C. Harper calls him nothing but amazing, and the most special player he's had since he's been at SFA. This young man in Joshua West has a great career ahead of him. But, David, you're right. It's just a, it is a little bit more than a taste. I mean, he is so incredibly explosive. And he, again, he's not a big guy. He's only a freshman. He's only going to get better. Mm -hmm. And he is really, really good right now. So Brady Attaway and his Lumberjacks have to answer again. And now their biggest deficit at 49-24. And still 5-15 to go in the third. Fred Ford, short gain on first down. Gus Johnson. SFA starting tailback for the year hurt. It's been a dose of Joshua West, Fred Ford, and Keith Lawson tonight from the tailback position. Chase Curry is the fullback. Blitz coming, going deep, and Mike Brooks is open with the catch. A foot race. Out of bounds in the red zone. Yeah, he beat Bobby Watkins on the play. And I tell you what, Mike Brooks is, is very dangerous. And this is another play where it's man-to-man -man coverage. Brady Attaway sees it, reads it correctly, and he's throwing to a spot. He's not throwing the ball to Mike Brooks. He's just throwing it out there because he knows after he makes that inside move, he breaks it back out. He's got to lay it out there. And Bobby Watkins is still down on the sideline over there on Stephen F. Austin's side. But that's a great play when you see a quarterback having that much trust and knowing he's got man-to-man -man coverage on the outside and just lays it out to a spot knowing that its receiver is going to eventually end up there by the time the ball comes down. A gain of 46 yards but you mentioned Shea and the story now is Dallas or Bobby Watkins the sophomore from Dallas who's being tended to in front of the SFA sideline. UCA has already lost today just in love their first starting safety out with a concussion and Bobby Watkins good to see he'll walk out the field 
on his own power, but but he is a bit woozy. Came in with two interceptions. In fact, two of UCA's three interceptions this season. And let's hope we'll see him back out onto the field. Yeah, Justin Love again, 12 career interceptions, first link, first team all Southland Conference. Man, there, that's even a more positive sign there, David. Bobby Watkins, he's actually the jog of the last couple of yards to get off the field. Definitely get looked at there on the sidelines, though. Marvin Mitchell and Terrell Wellmaker are the safeties. Not a way to throw yet again and picked off. And this is Mitchell and a lot of space in front of him. He'll be a foot race down the field. Trying to chase him is Mosley. He's not going to get to him. Mitchell, 99 yards. That play seemed doomed from the start. Brady Attaway had Fred Ford go in motion out to the right side, empty backfield. As he's looking down the field, you're going to see all the purple jerseys are pressing up on the wide receivers. You'll see down there around the five yard line. And then the same thing at the goal line. Marvin Mitchell playing the ball, read the eyes of Brady Attaway. After that pick goes in untouched. A long way to go, 99 yards. The junior from Carrollton, Georgia, just the fourth interception by UCA this year. What a huge turn of events. SFA looking to get on the board again, but it's Marvin Mitchell taking it down the field. Fifty-six, twenty-four. the score. Well, we talk about this Bear defense being stingy up front, but how about the back seven? You, you talk about needing the help in the secondary. Bobby Watkins goes out, Justin Love out for the game. Marvin Mitchell steps in and comes up with a huge play for the defense. Here's a look at it again. That's good protection, but again, he just read the eyes of the quarterback perfectly, and the defensive coverage on Marquise Mosley was there, and, and it just the defenders... David just playing the ball you know they're not they're not looking at the receivers and they're not retreating they get to the goal line and all of a sudden you start to have this this security blanket that you know they can't go much further behind you so you play closer to the ball and closer to the line Marvin Mitchell read the pass perfectly and came up with a huge play UCA has 35 points this quarter by the way there's still 422 left Clint Conk so happy with what he sees out into the field says the win last week against Lamar one of the most emotional he's ever been through with the injuries when Rick Smothers star quarterback out for the season they already knew that going into the Lamar game but then they lose their star tight end and NFL prospect Chase Dixon found a way to win in Beaumont and they have pulled away here in the third quarter on the purple and gray stripes and David, think about what has happened here in the third quarter. And it's still, we've got uh, about 4 minutes, 17 seconds left. The Central Arkansas team has scored on special teams and on defense and, of course, offense. But a 35-point explosion in the third quarter. Right, and that's all this quarter. The kick return to begin this quarter. Throw in three touchdowns and the pick six by Mitchell. Great point there. 56 24 and well you're Brady Attaway you go right back out there and try to make amends that was his 11th interception this season 21 touchdown passes he came in tied for fourth in the nation in touchdown throws you know, one of the things for Brady that, that you talk about the touchdown throws he did come into this game with 10 interceptions and that's a little bit high now you think about how many times that the lumberjacks put the ball in the air right but the 19 touchdowns the 10 interception ratio coming into today's game a little bit high on the interception side and then for the bears we do see mar or excuse me bobby watkins he checked back in marvin mitchell checked out marvin mitchell may need a break and good to see watkins back in at safety yeah, you saw the picture of mitchell <laughs> He was leaning down. He was huffing and puffing after the 99-yard score. Gain of about four for Joshua West. West, an 88-yard touchdown run last week against Nichols, averaging seven yards a carry coming in, but he's been bottled up so far today. Attaway to throw for the 57th time, and that's almost intercepted. Boyd did get his hand on the ball. Great coverage all the way on the far side of the field. 
Well, Bears Sports Information Director just came into our booth, David, and, and told me that the interception return got changed to, to 96 yards 96. On, the, on the return. But then he also let me know that the record is 100 yards held by Charlie Strong. Young man that's coaching over mm -hmm. there at Louisville. A wonderful job at Louisville. <laughs> yeah, how about that? And his Bears defense. Ears pinned back. And the handoff to Lawson on third is a yard shy of the first, and J.C. Harper will send the punting unit out. Well, like Justin Hurd was one of the Bears that came in with the stop to keep Lawson short of the first down. And that drive took under a minute. As the Lumberjacks can only look and see how this game has slipped away from them here in the third. They came fighting back and fighting back after UCA scores to begin this quarter. Oh, but that pick six may have taken the air out of the balloon. Flag down as Murphy takes an E after grabbing the punt of 43 yards. If UCA holds on, it'll be win number 103 for Clint Conk in his career. I actually called the, the first game he ever had as head coach of UCA. It was at Nichols. And so you see why Clint Conk was upset. A block in the back on a pun that Clay Murphy just took a knee on. And Clint Conk lost that game at Nichols where of course he played and was an All-American linebacker. They led by 20 going into the fourth but gave up 28 to Nichols. Now UCA at the time was a D2 squad and so the scholarships and numbers were definitely against them and that played a factor but you saw right away a change in that Bear team with Clint Conk at the helm and what a job he has done since and now his 14th season. It's a late flag with a play rule dead and it'll be a false start on the Bears. Well, you mentioned the 103rd win, David, but I will tell you, Clint Conk will tell you as well that he's more happy that it's 2-1 and one in mm -hmm. the Southland Conference than the 2013 season. Outstanding job of getting his team to the playoffs in the last two years. Yeah, they do hold on and win. They are still in that playoff hunt. They'll be 5-3. and three. One loss in conference. You'd have to think that they would have to win out. But even with all those injuries, they're still one of the tougher teams to beat in the Southland Conference. That's Justin Burdett on the catch, sophomore from Birmingham. Trey Valier is there for the tackle. Ooh, we heard that hit all the way up here. A gain of eight, now second down and seven after Burdett's seventh catch of the season. Handoff, Kelton Warren, boy, good agility going east-west and then a dart up field. He may have enough for the first. And this young man had his red shirt taken off just last week, and he's a good talent. Well, he certainly is. And it's one of the luxuries you'd like to have is when you have a guy like him, you could red shirt. But now you have to press him into service because of the injuries. And you just, I mean, you think about the things and the changes that they've had to make from a scheme standpoint. And really what they do overall without having to try to change it too much but then you've got you know, Taylor Reed a very athletic more running oriented quarterback and you also have Ryan Howard who's absolutely just lit it up here in this game it was third and inches but Reed makes sure this drive continues after the run of nine yards well and think about Howard coming back what he did last week just go back one week and think about how much better and if you would have told coach Conk after the Lamar game that hey it's okay, Ryan Howard's going to be a lot better than he was in this game. You go, <laughs> I'll take it. Five touchdown passes for Howard. Reed hit as he throws, finds Jose Moore, his first catch after the 64-yard strike for a score earlier this quarter. Gain of about six there. Another man who had his red shirt taken off last week. No win Rick Smothers and no Chase Dixon. Today, of course, they're out for the year, and Danzel Williams out with an abdominal strain, one of the core of running backs for the Bears. Williams averaging five and a half yards a carry, an Oklahoma transfer. Wilson slipping a tackle from Hippolyte. 
And he goes down the sideline. Valier will try to knock him out of bounds. Instead, he'll drag him down from behind. But how about those yards after the catch? All the way to the red zone again at 54. Now, that's one of the pass plays that we talked about. The little horizontal pass play where Jatavius Wilson catches the ball, a little bubble screen. And how about that? He's going to go through the arm tackle there with Artavius Hippolyte. And then he just spins out of that tackle, gets to the sideline, and Trey Valier is able to track him down. But, man, what a great play by Jatavius Wilson. Great effort by Valier as well. You see the score getting out of hand for the Lumberjacks, but showing full effort on that stop. And a man open, but just out of the reach. It hit the hands of Smith, but unable to haul it in. That, one, that throw was by Taylor Reed, and it was on target. Yep. Rotation. Quarterbacks continues. And I think that's actually important, even though the game is uh, clearly in the in the clutches, if you will, of the Bears. But having these quarterbacks rotate in and out because they, they need the reps as they have to continue to win out if they want to make the playoffs here in the Southland Conference. So Ryan Howard steps back in. You see it looking for their sixth touchdown of the quarter. Desmond Lewis was there incomplete. Also Wilson. And now it'll be third down and ten. Let's call Wilson the intended receiver. It was 21-10 Central Arkansas at the half. An explosion in the third quarter, which began with that Jatavius Wilson 85-yard kick return for a score. Both teams exchanged touchdowns for the first half of the quarter. All UCA since looking for Smith, and that's incomplete. They continue to challenge this SFA secondary, but you don't want to challenge Caleb Nelson too much. And a great one, the senior from Apopka, Florida. There he is, making his 32nd start today, and he had great coverage. Well, he definitely was, and he's a very good athlete as well. Lettered in volleyball in high school. Just now, very good athlete in. Did a nice job of kind of just timing that ball perfectly as he was going up on his jump, flicked it away from the wide receiver. No, no big deal. Just knock it down, incomplete pass. Jace Decker on to attempt the field goal, and it's good. And so UCA adds three more, 38 in the quarter. Dinker's third field goal of the season. It's now 59 to 24. You come out of the Lamar win as you see the drive. Eight plays, 75 yards, just took 227. And Clint Kong, you know, said it. It was such an emotional win. You come out of it with relief. Here, assuming UCA holds on, this is the one where they have to gain a lot of confidence going into the remaining games. It's November next week, so crunch time's going to begin in Southland play. Well, and they certainly understand that, and they know the importance of this game. And I, I tell you, there is such a, an incredible comfort level for Central Arkansas at home. I mean, they, they, this has uh, been a, a very tough place to come in as a visiting team, as a road team to come in and win. And they've defended the turf very well. They've only lost one game, and that was earlier in the year to McNeese. But it is a very good comfort level, like a little home cooking, if you will, to be on the stripes. It is rare that a game between these two teams has been so one-sided just once in the first seven meetings of this series has there been a blowout. And it didn't look that way until the third quarter. Well, after bobbling the ball, oh, Joshua no. West pays for his decision. Down to the six. Well, he took a shot. Okay, that's number 52. That is Zach Watkins, junior from wow. Springdale, Arkansas. Uh, and Coach Harper's like thinking, oh, no. He could have easily gone down and taken the knee. It's just one of those things, too, as a young player. You know, in the heat of the moment, you're not sure, can I come out? I kind of muff the ball. Take a look here. Do I have to bring it out? Take the knee right there, but nope, decides to bring it out. And as you said, he definitely pays for it. Fred Ford is the tailback. Good run. You're talking about the slew of running backs that UCA has. Yeah, it's a vein. It's very deep at that position as well with Ford, Lawson, and, of course, Joshua West. Eight-yard gain. 
Ford will give it another try and nothing doing Radarius Winston was the first one there Blake Childress finished him off I tell you, I like when Fred Ford is running downhill instead of trying to bounce it out to the outside and make guys miss he's much more effective with the shoulders pointing pointing straight ahead oh, whistle time gets to zero before the snap 38 14 Central Arkansas outscores SFA this quarter and the Bears during homecoming rolling over the Lumberjacks Every day, kids witness bullying. They want to help, but don't know how. Teach your kids how to be more than a bystander. Visit stopbullying.gov. Thanks for calling the GED Pep Talk Center. Jerry Stiller speaking. Your level seven in your face pep talk. I can keep pushing. Believe me, I'm good at it. But at some point, you're going to need to start pushing yourself. See, once you've got your GED diploma, you, you'll feel so good about yourself. You tell them. You can't change your past, but you can definitely change your future. That makes me so happy. I'm ready to bust out a dance. Mr. Trejo, can I transfer this guy to you? My gentle technique isn't really working. You need something a little more persuasive. Yes. You listen. And you listen good. Hey, where's my sandwich? Terry? Take it from me to King DMC. It's a real cool thing to get your GED. Get that diploma! Now hold on and we'll find you three GED classes. Capiche? Whatever motivation you need, we've got a pep talk for you. Get your GED pep talk and find free classes at yourged.org. People think I'm trash. But they're wrong. Today I'm just an aluminum can. One day, I could be a stadium. Now well, they're having fun on the UCA sideline, pulling away in the third with 38 points. The Bears over the Lumberjacks by a 59-24 score. David Salzman alongside She Walker, Aaron Cofield down in the purple in gray stripes and you said it a few minutes ago Shay this is a hard place for opponents to come in and win McNeese State did just that earlier this season a game you saw right here on the Southland TV network SFA having trouble great defensive play and almost intercepted Justice Liggins was the intended receiver and Bobby Watkins almost had it so you talk about that win by the Cowboys here on this stadium it was the first time in 14 games that an opponent came in here and walked away with the victory. It was a wild game, too. And you saw it. Central Arkansas had 106 plays for the game. They had 464 yards in the first half. You throw out those stats, and you're thinking, if they're not rolling, they're at least winning. And yet, McNeese came away with a 59-28 victory over the Bears that afternoon. You know, Cody Stroud is just having a, a magical year for the Cowboys on offense and defensively. I tell you, I was really impressed with the way that the entire defense runs to the ball. I mean, they, they really, really look good to the Cowboys. And obviously, at 2 0 in the Southland Conference, they've earned it. And as we saw last, blowing out Nichols in the third quarter. Well, that is a uh, maybe hasn't been a tradition for that long the game being at Reliance Stadium but it has been a tradition in terms of the rivalry An old cliche you throw out the records it is true when SFA and Sam Houston State get together and you'll see it Randy McElvoy will be back with Shea three o'clock next Saturday from Reliance Stadium on the Southland TV network Warren trying to bounce it outside and the Lumberjacks are there on that first down carry In fact, last year, it looked like Sam Houston would pull away for a blowout win against SFA, and all of a sudden, Brady Attaway and company made it interesting, had a chance yeah. to tie at the very end, and a shootout loss to Sam Houston State. And Cordell Roberson, the mm -hmm. outstanding wide receiver for SFA, just it had a, a huge game. Yeah, it was a one-man show. Taylor Reed, nice run, and wow. he may have the first. How about the escapability? Looked like everything broke down on Taylor Reed when he was back there. And I don't know if he was going to run the ball originally or not. It looked like he got moved off the mark, but 
once it got outside the pocket, he just kind of lit it up and ran straight up the field, picked up the first down. You're up 35, but you know, again, we haven't seen a lot of Ryan Howard or Taylor Reed this season. For, for so for Clint Conkey saying we got to get more reps with these guys, doesn't look like they're going to slow things down. Well, not so much this season, but you, you know the, the stats are, are extremely sparse for either of those guys mm -hmm. this year. But you know, go back to last year. Well, they didn't play last year either. I mean, Winrix Mothers was was uh, the Southland Conference Player of the Year. We talked about offensive player, and and you know, so these guys need game reps. Okay, Coach Conk is not going to be comfortable. I can tell you, until their season's probably over. That's when I say, okay, it was about right. Three yard gain for Kelton Warren on first down. He remains in the contest. Reed is the quarterback. Warren, another carry and the tackle made a short gain on second down. It was Destin Mosley, sophomore from Jefferson, Texas, on the stop. And and one thing that you all saw, so, sorry, David, but sure. one thing that you also see, you see four guys now for Central Arkansas coming, checking in. And, and that's not because they're they're bringing in a bunch. Of, they just want to make sure that the quarterbacks are getting an opportunity to run a bunch of different sets and formations. And you're seeing you're seeing that kind of play out right now where they're getting an opportunity to really get deeper, they're, extend their knowledge in the playbook. Good slide. And he slid just before the first down marker to Ryan Howard. So he will be just short. And it's going to be fourth and short for the Bears. Well, offensively up front, again, this Bears front has done a great job of protecting the quarterbacks. You see there's a great seam right there. And the heads up play there by Ryan Howard. Not only did he slide, but he kind of turned and shielded himself to make sure that he wasn't going to take a, a more of a frontal hit as he did earlier in the game. Even Clint Conk said that not only is Ryan Howard good at moving in the pocket, he said he may even be a better pocket quarterback than when Rick Smothers was. Smothers was so good as a two-way quarterback. Well, Taylor Reed trying to make a lot, or not just, he was trying to make a yard is what he was trying to make, and it took him a long time to get back near the line of scrimmage. Not so sure that he made it. Doesn't look like he made it. It was fourth down and one, and the mark says SFA football, and so a stop by the Lumberjack defense. They'll have it from their own 34. So Brady Hannaway, you know they can score in a hurry. And obviously the scoreboard doesn't look favorable for them with just under 12 minutes left. But they had scored two touchdowns in the third and were driving for another one. And that pick six again really changed things. 96 yard return by Marvin Mitchell. Little flip to Braxton Bearden and Bearden on the jet sweep. A lot of room. In fact, that's enough for the first, a gain of 11. Yeah, completed pass there by Brady Attaway. And that's true. Ball traveled about six inches. It is enough for the completion as it did move forward. Attaway unofficially 370 yards passing today. Fred Ford, gain of a couple, maybe close to three yards. Both these teams one and one in the Southland Conference coming in. Another way to throw yet again, and that's almost intercepted. Watkins anticipated that throw to Bearden. What? The fall championships. November 1st cross country is coming up. In fact, that is just an under a week on Friday in Lake Charles, and then Boy, so competitive Southland Conference soccer has been this season. Soccer tournament November 7th through the 10th on the campus of McNeese State University. And then they'll go down to Corpus Christi November 22nd through the 24th for volleyball. Oh, what a crunch as Thomas used his entire body to dive forward. I'm sorry, that wasn't Thomas. That was actually Liggins to dive forward to try to make that grab. And he was hammered down by Willmaker. Well, on fourth down now, both defenses have turned the other offense over. First, Stephen F. Austin and now Central Arkansas's defense returning the favor. So field position and the, the battle continues, actually. The Lumberjacks getting ready to punt the ball away on fourth down. Bruno to punt it away. You see it comes after him, Bruno. 
We'll get it away. And Murphy does the oh, same thing. Is... Well, I would say safe. Probably just should have let that yeah, go, absolutely. but takes the knee inside the 10. Way dangerous. Don't do that. Still, UCA will have it when we return as the Bears are rolling on homecoming. The State Farm Southland Conference mascot challenge is back. This year's field is bigger and stronger. Willie the Wildcat. Bruce D. Bear. Mingo the Husky. Red the Cardinal. Big Red the Cardinal. Rowdy the Cowboy. Lafitte the Instigator. Colonel Tulu. Vic the Demon. Eli the Eagle. Rumi the Lion. The Lumberjack. Izzy the Islander. And defending champion, Sammy the Bearcat. $5,000 is on the line. Vote for your favorite on the Southland Conference Facebook page. This will be your premium right here. It's hard to interrupt. I just want to say, I combined home and auto with State Farm. Saved 760 bucks. Love this guy. Okay, does it bother anybody else that the mime is talking? Freaky. Bundle home and auto, and you could save 760 bucks. That's 760 very good reasons to contact your local State Farm agent. Well, the high temperature today was forecast to be in the mid-70s, and I can tell you, we didn't get close to that, and now temperatures continuing to fall. A lot of the Bear fans braving that cool weather after we did have quite a rainstorm but a couple of hours before we went on the year here. The Bears have stormed to a big lead over the Lumberjacks. Wilson is brought down. A short gain on first. 59-24 UCA. They led 21-10 at the half. Taylor Reed, both he and Ryan Howard have done a fine job at quarterback this afternoon for Clint Conks Bears. Taylor Reed, a touchdown pass and a touchdown run. Of course, for so long it was the Winrick Smothers show here in Conway, but Howard and Reed have done valiant jobs in Smothers' place out for the rest of the year with a broken ankle. Wilson nowhere to go and SFA is playing with some fight defensively a lot of pride there by the team in white Well, Caleb Nelson is certainly a senior leader on that defense for the Lumberjacks on the tackle there and Yeah, there's not gonna be any quit in this team it, You know you talk about it just it was a barrage of points that happened to him and it happened to him in all three facets of the game David and I think really that's the separation that we saw because they kind of stayed pace for the first two they just couldn't hang on for the rest of the scores a third and eight oh that almost intercepted and almost caught the pass was intended for wilson but excellent anticipation by hip light almost had the pick well, lumberjacks should get pretty good field position here mike brooks is going to be standing inside central arkansas territory by our count, as SFA is ready to get the ball back, Shay, the Lumberjacks have run 95 plays today. UCA 60. As you said, that third quarter, touchdowns in all three phases by the Bears, a big difference. Brooks trying to make something out of this, and he just might. A lot of room on that far side. He's into UCA territory. And a very nice return by the senior Mike Brooks. All right, well, I went with Brandon Spears, the great Northwestern State offensive lineman. Marcus Spears, I apologize, in the uh, first half. And now your turn, Shay, for your choice for the Southland Conference 50th anniversary all-time football team. And like I said, Marcus Spears, great, but uh, this is presented by Mid-South Bank. I pick Ray Brown, Arkansas State. Anybody that can play in the NFL for 20 years, you know you did okay at the college level. First team All-America in 1985. Played for Larry Lacewell at Arkansas State. But just, uh, you know, I think when you can do what he did, uh, certainly at the collegiate level, very deserving to be on this list.
Mid-South Bank presenting the all-time Southland Football League team. That is a rare sight that we just saw. Brady Attaway being sacked. That's just the fourth time Attaway has been sacked all season long. Doesn't happen very often. He generally gets the ball out so quickly that he's, uh, he's not even a target for a sack. T.J. Randall bringing him down. Junior now with two and a half sacks this season. Second and long. And a handoff to just shy of midfield. Jamarcus Walker gets his first carry. Richard freshman from Lufkin, Texas, just south of SFA's home of Nacogdoches. There's been a football factory, the, the pack in Lufkin. Love the Panthers. I tell you what, though, this is a third and a mile for Attaway. That, oh, and... There was I some don't think contact. Boyd was even looking for the ball. Yeah, Boyd was not looking. There was contact by Justin Hurd, but no flag, and the Lumberjacks now have to punt. Here's the play again. You see the play again on third and a long way. Had he been able to catch the ball, still not going to pick up the first down. But maybe the more interesting thing is that Clay Murphy is back to field the punt, standing on the 10-yard line, and that last time that he did, you know, David, it was one of those punts when, when the ball hits and it bounces high and you know you've got bodies around you, you just let it go. You don't need to field it. Nick Bruno, another punt. Unless you can do that. Yep. That's, <laughs> there you go. All right, Clay. You're back, you're back in the good graces of coaches now. <laughs> Safe fair catch by Clay Murphy. And once again, UCA will have the ball back. Bears. Unless well, SFA can pull up the miracle comeback to go two and one in conference play. Already talked about how SFA will take on Sam Houston State in the Battle of the Piney Woods next Saturday at three here on the network. UCA will take the trip to Natchitoches to take on Northwestern State. A seven o'clock kick on ESPN three. Two Southland games on ESPN three tonight. Southeastern Louisiana hosting Lamar and Abilene Christian looking for a big win against New Mexico State. New Mexico State an independent this season in the FBS. They'll join the Sun Belt next season. Big hole, a ton of room, and it's Kelton Warren trying to outrun the Lumberjack D, and he will, 81 yards. So you get your red shirt pulled off last week. And you show off in front of the home crowd the following week. Kelton Warren, good job up front again. There's a great scene there. There's one hand laid on him, and then he just bursts through, and just it's a foot race. Looked like there was a chance that there might have been a lumberjack defender getting close to him, but he was never able to close the gap. Kelton Warren just waltzes into the end zone. 65 points for the Bears. And Denker gives UCA 66. So you mentioned the red shirt. Two Bears who had their red shirts taken off just last week in Beaumont against Lamar with touchdowns today. Kelton Warren, 81 yard run. Jose Moore in the third quarter, a 64 yard touchdown catch from Ryan Howard. 66 24 and Warren not bad in your first full game in a UCA uniform 10 carries 106 yards. Yeah when it's going good it's going good and the Bears are certainly on a roll. And down to Aaron Cofield with a special guest. Well guys I found Winrick Smothers here in the stands he's got his leg propped up tell me first how did surgery go? It went well, you know, the doctor said everything went fine. He put a plate in it, put some screws in it, getting everything back together, so it was fine. How difficult has it been for you? You know, of course, your senior season, you really want to come out and have a great year, and then for that to happen. It's been real difficult, you know. I mean, it's kind of hard to come to grips with that my season's over. It's my senior season. And I mean, I just wanted to finish out my season strong. I know it started off a little shaky and whatnot, but I just wanted to finish it strong, and I couldn't quite do that. So it was a little heartbreaking, but, you know, I'm always supporting my team, and I'm proud of the way they're doing right now, so it makes me happy. I know with the crutches, it would have been hard to be down there on the sideline, but just transitioning to be a team leader now, what will that be like for you? I mean, I just gotta, I just gotta motivate my team in every way I know how. You know, if it, if it takes me cheering for them, or if they need me to be on the field, I'll be on the field. I mean, whatever they need me to do for them, I'm willing to do it for them. Just 
as long as they keep doing things like this, you know, I, I'm happy for them. So I'm just, whatever my team needs me to do, that'd be fine. All right, thanks so much. No problem, thank you. Guys? Thank you, Aaron, but great to see Winrick Smothers in such good spirits, the senior from Destrehan, Louisiana. What a career, 6,290 yards of total offense. Shea, that came in just 19 starts. Yeah, he did a very impressive career, albeit cut short by the injury, but you love the attitude and, and you like the way that the coaches talk about Winrick Smothers. And Coach Conn couldn't say enough nice things about what he has meant to this team and of course, Nathan Brown, quarterback that was here before Nathan Dick, is the quarterback coach, and you know he couldn't say enough nice things mm -hmm. about Smothers as well. Just a all-around class guy. And to the Fred Ford carry, a catch for a first down by Taylor, uh, Hunter Taylor. Taylor, retro freshman from White House, Texas, same high school as Brady Attaway, or rather Robert Sylvester. I apologize. Robert Sylvester on the catch. Attaway still in at quarterback, and Fred Ford is another good yeah, run. That's the way I like to see him run. And Ford showing off his burst of speed and brought down just shy of the goal line. A gain of 50. It was Mitchell saving the touchdown. How about Fred Ford? We talk about it. he is better going downhill. David, take a look. He's going to hit this right in the middle. But that bare defense and he bounces out the side, but he never goes horizontal. He keeps going downhill, downfield. And Mitchell finally pushes him out, but he's down there around the five yard line, just inside of it. Now showing a little bit of the future, right, of this SFA team. Of course, Gus Johnson's a junior here. They got so many guys coming back. And an interception on a pass going into the end zone. Taking it out means no touchback, but UCA will have it. At the two as Attaway is intercepted for the second time this half. Darius Reed with the pick. This is the play that Brady Attaway has thrown almost all game, David. And he's throwing the ball with the receiver is covered by the defensive back. And he throws the ball like on a stop route. And Darius Reed finally got wise to it and said, nope. He stops, he sees the receiver stop, he stops, turns quickly, comes up with the interception. Yeah, obvious that way. Never expected Reed to be there. Sophomore from Bush High School in Houston. Yeah, he's had the two big interceptions, Brady Attaway, but how much can you ask of this young man when, when you have had a defense that has struggled this season as SFA, and you just saw the numbers briefly, 40 of 63 passing for Attaway today, over 400 yards. Well, as, as goofy as this is going to sound, the challenge is, is you have to reload because next week, you, as we've already talked about, you're playing in the Battle of Piney Woods against your rival, Sam Houston State. Um, so it's, it's kind of back to the same old grind, if you will, but figuring out a way how you can get the ball downfield, limit some of those mistakes. And that's going to be the challenge. I mean, Brady, but he's shown and he's shown us that he's put himself in a position where he knows how to do that over the course of his career. And you know he wants to end his career with a victory over Sam Houston State and perhaps in the hopes of the Bearcats making the playoffs. Of course, it's Sam Houston with one loss in conference play this season. That coming to McNeese State last week in Lake Charles. Now, it's not very often. David that that this would happen but and we're way way early in the season but just projecting down the road when you look at the teams and how they're playing southeastern as we noted earlier getting votes in the top 25 central arkansas firmly planted as is mcneese and sam houston state so there's an opportunity or possibility and it has happened before there were three teams from the conference can go into the playoffs. But when you have the improvement in the league from top to bottom, so Nicholas State, mm -hmm. you know, is, is now a very good team. Now you've got the uh, Northwestern State. They're, they're starting to make some strides. I mean, just the way that things are going. I mean, it, the conference is vastly improved. A couple of things to take out of the graphic as we look at the FCS Sports Network poll. McNeese and Sam Houston State two of the top seven ranked teams in the country and you mentioned Shay there's UCA southeastern Louisiana Lions getting votes but victories for the Southland Conference this season over two of those top five teams Sam Houston State 
Tim Flanders hit the 5,000 yard mark of his career with a win at home over Eastern Washington. And this SFA team, we're seeing struggling today. Montana State went down to Nacogdoches. The Lumberjacks came away with a huge win over Montana State earlier this season. UCA calls timeout before the punt. Well, and the last time that three teams from the Southern Conference did make it in the playoffs was 2001. So not unprecedented. And again, I just, I, me having the, the opportunity to see these teams play over the last couple of years and the improvements in them mm -hmm. and, and the way that they're playing and, you, and the rankings certainly bear that out. Of course, FCS has expanded the number of teams that can make the playoffs, so that increases the chance of the scenario you just described, Shay. Three teams from the conference making it. It'd be hard to argue against if those three teams that make it continue to play very well the rest of the season, perhaps just knock each other off. Well, and there will be some of that as we get further down the road. Again, this is only the third conference game. Excuse me, fourth conference game. Right, Southeastern oh, has third, but yes. Third. Southeastern has UCA. Sam and McNeese still to come. Brooks, and that'll be a flag, a face mask, horse collar. A flag is going to be called on Smith on the tackle of Brooks. 66 24 the score. It was just 7 3 after a quarter. Central Arkansas led at the break 21 10, exploded for 38 points in just the third quarter. It's been a busy day for that man, Eddie Shelton, our referee. He'll give us the call. Area return, personal foul, face mask. Number 88, 15-yard penalty, one back first down. So SFA will start this drive in UCA field position when we return. I'm one on Lucky Guy. The chance of being involved in a robbery is 1 in 757. The chances of being struck by lightning is 1 in 750,000. Please fasten your seatbelts for unexpected turbulence. The chances of being a victim in an airline crash, 1 in 29 million. Hey, could I get some peanuts? The chances of being involved in a car crash are far greater than lightning strikes and plane crashes. And if you are texting while driving, your risk of crash increases 23 times. Now, I may be an unlucky guy, but I don't have to be part of that statistic, and neither do you. Drive responsibly. Wow, these are really good. You act surprised. Practice makes perfect. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. I am Clint Conk, the head football coach at the University of Central Arkansas, and I am Southland Strong. One of a number of impressive coaches that uh, you, you get to visit with every week as you and Randy McAvoy do the games here in the Southland Conference Television Network. Clint Conk, you're on the top of that list, that's for sure. What a job he's done with his UCA Bear team, so short-handed but dominating SFA here this afternoon. Joshua West gets the first yard run. You see the score 66-24. And the new quarterback for the Lumberjacks is Joe Minden, sophomore from Capel, Texas. This is his fourth game of the year. But, and you think that Brady Attaway is really, and, and I think Coach Harper probably just trying to get Brady just to clear the brain, if you will, a little bit. You know, it's been a long game. It's been a difficult game. And then just start preparing for next week. Mm -hmm. Both of Attaway's interceptions in the end zone. One return, 96 yards for a score. So say end zone on passes to the end zone. And Minden, 176 yards passing coming in. One touchdown, no interceptions. Holds the single season record for most pass yards and touchdown passes. And a very good high school program in Capel in the Dallas area. A shot level there. 
on Braxton Bearden. And that was Josh Jones doing the work. Another one of those hits where you hear the defender out of there in the open field just making sure that everything happens right in front of him and just stones the receiver. Minden stutter stepping and nice grab by Bearden, but he's out of bounds. Couldn't he, get a foot in. He was definitely out of bounds. But I don't think you'll see a finer catch. <laughs> and we've seen some great catches today. But Braxton Bearden trying to keep the body inbounds has the arm and the upper bodies extended way beyond the line, but not able to get down inbounds. The Lumberjacks will go for it on fourth and ten. That's the fade to fall to three and five overall, one and two in conference play. UCA two and one Southland Mark, five and three overall. Can Minden get the ten yards on the run? No, sir. But a flag down, two flags down actually. Well, there's going to be a hold against the Lumberjack wide receiver who was trying to help his quarterback not get a hit, and he defended. He was able to hold one guy, but. See with the ball on sideline, it may just be offsetting here. I did not think that a flag was thrown on the hit of Minden. Well, let's see. It may just be the holding Offense call if there wasn't a second flag. Holding on the Lumberjacks declined, and the Bears will take over on downs. And Minden rolled out to his right. Downfield coverage by the Bears secondary was fantastic. No one open, and he tried to see if he could get to the to the uh, to get the yardage for the first down, but not able to do so. Trey Shucker will come in at quarterback for UCA. 6'3 sophomore from Clarksville, Arkansas. You mentioned Shea how tough it is to win here, and McNeese is the only team to do that in the last three years here in Conway. The UCA schedule is very interesting. Their road games left or at Northwestern State in a much improved Nickel State team. They get Southeastern Louisiana and Sam Houston State here in Conway. Those are their final four games of the regular season after this one today. Well, it, like I said, I mean, this is how just incredibly tight this race is going to be this year in the Southland Conference. You, you, you had heavyweight teams, teams that, that you would not have expected to be in the hunt or in the race and playing as well as they do. And one of the things that we asked, uh, we asked Coach Harper, he said, hey, you know, you guys went to Southeastern and went to Hammond and, you know, got, you know, the, the score was very lopsided and you only scored 14 points, which is very uncharacteristic for your offense. He said, hey, stop right there. Give Southeastern all the credit. He said they are a fantastic team. He said they are a great team. And, and he was he couldn't say enough about how strong the Lions defense is and how well they play under Coach Roberts and again just couldn't say enough about it. Southeastern will host Lamar tonight. A victory and the Lions are three and zero in conference play and six and two overall. And to your point, Southeastern Louisiana gave TCU all they could handle back in September before the Horn Frogs would pull away late and win that game in Fort Worth. Big one tonight for TCU hosting Texas. As we wind things down here on the purple and gray stripes, homecoming, Clint Conk will improve his homecoming record to 13 and 1. In fact, his only loss in 2002 when the Bears were a Division II team, and that loss was to North Alabama at the time of Division II power. So it's been since 2002 since the Bears have lost a homecoming game here. Well, and you think about the teams that you schedule generally what you try to do is uh, you try to schedule the the patsy if you will for your homecoming game and I tell you what Stephen F Austin certainly doesn't fit that bill at all a very talented team and really just a very competitive game until probably 10 minutes left in the third quarter before things just kind of unwound for the lumberjacks you see yeah, lets the clock run down as much as possible before taking time out to avoid the delay a game on fourth down and two. Now we mentioned so many times, and it is worth repeating the injuries that UCA has had to deal with. Saw Aaron's conversation earlier with Winrick Smothers, UCA star quarterback. Well, Chase Dixon, a man who's getting just more and more attention week after week, an NFL prospect at tight end. This is him being lifted into the cart 
in Beaumont last week and look at the reaction of his teammates coming up to the senior. Well, you can see how much he means to the team and, and I, I can tell you just from having seen him in that McNeese game, he is an impressive tight end. I'm talking about NFL caliber tight end and sad to see him not be able to complete his senior season, but certainly a bright future ahead of him. Scouts drooling over him the past month was really discovered kind of kind of a, a final push if you will by NFL scouts at Central Arkansas's loss to Colorado and in love with they see and wish for a speedy and healthy recovery by Chase Dixon and he just had 33 catches in his UCA career but 10 for touchdowns 66 24 the UCA lead with 114 left well counting down it'll be here before you know it Division one football championship all the attention over playoffs next season in the FBS Well, they've done it in the FCS for years and years Saturday January 4th Toyota Stadium the one o'clock start in Frisco look at the bottom of the graphic you can buy sell or transfer tickets at NCAA.com slash FCS the game is currently sold out but by my understanding, North Dakota State fans, they bought up a lot of Continue. seats as they have the last two years. If they lose in the playoffs before getting there, we'll go to that site, try to get tickets from the fans up in North Dakota. Having a great run, just shy of the goal line. Keith Lawson gaining 39 yards. And there it is again, NCAA.com slash FCS. Keep that website in mind as we head to the postseason. Well, in the postseason again, thrilling. Sam Houston State making it to the state, excuse me, the state, the national championship. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly the best team in the state, FCS-wise, but uh, national championship game two years in a row. Nowhere to go is Lawson wrapped up and thrown down, making sure he wouldn't get to that end zone was D.J. Willis, senior from the Colony, Texas, and there's number 92, Bo Harper, Retro freshman from Monroe, Louisiana. Trying to finish the game off with a score as we're under a minute. Minden pressure with room to the corner and he'll get there. A touchdown for SFA. Well, he was definitely in a throw first mode, David, but when the coverage was good downfield, he looked at it, he saw a wide open turf to his left. Take another look here. Looking downfield, looking downfield, he just kind of tucks the ball inside and says, look, I can walk this one in, and he does. Great elusiveness by Minden getting away from Bo Harper. The future, if you will. Brady Attaway is a senior, Minden a sophomore, and showing off some things that maybe Lumberjack fans are going to see a lot more of starting in 2014. Jordan Wiggs, the extra point is good, and it's 66-31, the UCA lead. Interesting to see what happens next week. As SFA, although falling to one and two in the conference, would love nothing more than to knock off their rival in Sam Houston State at Reliance Stadium next Saturday at three o'clock. I don't think there's any doubt that J.C. Harper and his coaching staff is going to get this team ready. And of course, we've seen the, the leadership of this Lumberjack squad, Brady Attaway and company leading the way. Despite this disappointment, and that southeastern disappointment a couple of weeks ago. I think one and two is unexpected if you were a lumberjack getting into this season. But they will be ready for the Bearcats come next Saturday. There's no doubt about it. And, and JC does such a great job of getting his team ready to play, not just in that game, but certainly every week. And, you know, again, I, I think the southeastern game was an aberration. Today, we saw this lumberjack team. They were hanging in, they were matching score for score in the second half. And then, again, as we said, things just kind of unwound on them with the special teams score that started it the, the, the uh, Bears run on it and then that long interception return you talked about this earlier David but it really just seemed to kind of be the it just the, 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 the switch that flipped the momentum completely to the UCA side and really never looked back from there Bears call timeout they were not expecting SFA to line up for an onside kick and so the Bears will bring out the hands team as SFA will try to Regain possession scores from around the Southland Conference incarnate word an early lead in San Antonio over Houston Baptist Three nothing and getting underway in under a half hour Abilene Christian looking for a big road win in Las Cruces against New Mexico State and 
Gerald Broussard, Lincoln Rose with a call, ESPN3, Southeastern Louisiana, and Lamar. And you know that New Mexico State game against ACU also on ESPN3. And a great job the Southland Conference has done. It seems year after year just getting more exposure for its football teams, and especially in a year like 2013 where we've said it, Shay, no easy games because of the competitiveness top to bottom of this league. A couple of real good games going on tonight that you can watch on ESPN3. Onside kick has to go 10 yards, it and was, I think it was touched before 10 yards, but it, Clay Murphy gets it anyway. Yeah, it was touched before, just about on the ninth yard. It needed to crawl forward one more yard, but <laughs> a little overzealous there on the Lumberjacks. Got a hand on it, but Clay Murphy, as you said, comes up with the recovery. So UCA, so banged up offensively. 66 on the board. And you have to say a tremendously satisfying win for that man, Clint Cogna. He just gave out a big exhale. But, you know, again, he, he described the win last week as a program win. This one, the same thing. He's shown up the depth of his team. Well, and, and think about what they're coming off of. We've, we've documented now Winbrook Summers out, Chase Dixon out. I'm talking about two of your, your prominent offensive players. And yet you come out and you're able to put 66 points up on the board with Ryan Howard doing just a, a fantastic job Taylor Reed throwing that touchdown pass earlier to Desmond Lewis and then running the ball so effectively but you, you really have to tip your hat to Central Arkansas in the coaching staff for saying hey listen we've we've lost some major guys and we have been able to to fashion together and form together some semblance of a team and we're going to continue to stick with what we're doing we're going to play sound defense I just thought they did a really fantastic job tonight and they're only going to get better as the season progresses we saw Clint Conk and JC Harper exchange pleasantries great friends both these teams just under 700 yards of offense but you see on the scoreboard wins by 35 think of the NCAA as a spirit squad cheering for student athletes at every big event and every small one we'd be there in the classroom at graduation at their first job interview okay so don't think of us as a spirit squad think of us as a mascot well just know we're always there for student athletes in the NCAA Division I Football Championship Subdivision, the game is played with perseverance, integrity, passion, character, and sportsmanship as he works to honor the game and respect his teammates, opponents, officials, and fans. Every FCS player grows in his responsibilities as a student athlete and as a member of his campus and community. The NCAA Division I Football Championship Subdivision. Every down, every day. Battle of the Piney Woods, Stephen F. Austin versus Sam Houston State. 3 o'clock Saturday on the Southland Conference Television Network. The Bears celebrate Central Arkansas 66, Stephen F. Austin 31, as UCA keeps its hopes alive for a Southland Conference title. Time now for the Southland Strong player of the game. You put up 66, we have a lot of choices, but we'll go with Desmond Lewis. This tremendous grab, part of a five catch, 160 yard day and two touchdowns for Lewis this afternoon. Well, he was just dominating all afternoon, David, as you say, and the fact is, is that he got single coverage and when he got single coverage, he beat single coverage. Desmond Lewis was unstoppable today. Lumberjacks had no answer for him. Ryan Howard, found him and then again Taylor Reed here gets him for the touchdown catch but again Desmond Lewis a, a settling factor for these two young quarterbacks Desmond Lewis our Southland strong player of the game looking at the final stats well, there was a lot of offense look at this Shay 681 yards for SFA including 515 through the year UCA 683 yards stat sheet for SFA for the most part looks good but on the scoreboard, it was all Bears today. Well, 31 points scored in total, 97 to finish the game. 
And next week, we'll see these Lumberjacks again, the big rivalry, the Battle of the Piney Woods, as SFA takes on Sam Houston State, a 3 o'clock kick from Reliance Stadium in Houston here on the Southland Conference Television Network. My name is David Salzman, alongside Shea Walker with Aaron Cofield down on the sideline. And our tremendous crew, we appreciate all of you for being with us. Desmond Lewis and the UCA Bears roll to the victory on homecoming. Oh wait, this is different. All right, right here, real quick. And do I need to introduce it, or I can just get right into it? Get that school board. Okay. No, let me. I have bad mouth there. <laughs> 